Welcome back to Travoltine Presents Easy Riders. Hosted by Jeff Sweeney and Stuart Elmore. Covering Zoolander with special guest Sam Kelly. But why male models? I just told you why male models like a moment ago. Oh, <laughs> Jeff making a face. This is going to be really hard to like talk about this movie, which is as a very visual component to it through an auditory. My, my big medium. pitch for this episode is that we upload a two hour long uh, silent <laughs> audio track of us just doing faces. Just blue steel <laughs> over and over again. Blue steel magnum. The thing I love about blue about blue steel is that I was like, where'd they come up with the name Blue Steel? Because I really like this Jamie Lee Curtis action movie from the 90s called Blue Steel. Yeah. That like nobody saw when it came out. Mm -hmm. And then I look up and it is actually just named after the Jamie Lee Curtis action movie Blue Steel. Yeah. <laughs> That's the most fun piece of Zoolander trivia it's, I've ever heard. It's that. And it's the, th this movie is like trivia central. There's so many like random bits in this movie. You're like, what the fuck is that about? And they're like, no, they're just riffing on the Manchurian candidate. <laughs> Stuart, what? You guys keep going. What did you just do? I just javied the cables. Okay, it sounds better. I I think I think I know what the problem is. Okay, I think all the cables I'm, are. I'm too, really proud of you. Too close together, but it's not something I can really do mid recording. I'd have to like. Like, yeah, you see it coming back yeah, in. Yeah. But I think I can, like... The listener home is ecstatic right now listening to this. Nothing's more interesting on a podcast than discussing cabling. <laughs> in fact, I wish more did it. But they always want to talk about... You listen to NPR, right? <laughs> yeah. And they just want to talk about the story. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Who cares about the story? I want to know how you got it. I want to, I want to know the cabling. The recording mechanism that <laughs> yeah. got us here. Tell me about your tech. Tell me about the cables, per, you know, from one tech to another. Folks, this week we're joined again by Sam Kelly. Sam Kelly. Joining us from Dudley Do Right. Joining us from Sword of Fish. Greatest movie of all time. Um, and folks, you might think we're here to talk about Zoolander this week, but in fact, we are here to talk about Swordfish again. Um, <laughs> this is Swordfish Part shit. 2. <laughs> we got some shit we got to sort out. That yeah. movie was on TV at a bar a few months ago. That's where it plays. That's yeah, the only the, place it plays. You, you have like, yeah. if you want to see, you have to go to a bar at 1030 p.m. and it will be playing from some random scene. And if you're lucky, you can get the Halle Berry scene early. Yeah. Um, pretty much yes it only lives on cable and like the cableized tv in the witching version. hour the witching hour version at in, like three in the morning incredibly unfunny movie always plays on tbs yes i don't understand <laughs> it is always on tbs you're right tbs or tnt it's weird we something we've lost in the age of streaming is like the 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 phenomenon of finding a movie on tv well it's so funny you should say yeah. the phenomenon of finding a movie yeah, on TV phenomenon. because phenomenon is a movie that only got found on TV. Yes. <laughs> have you seen phenomenon? I have not. No, it's a great movie. It's about John Travolta gets zapped by a UFO and develops telekinetic powers. It's kind of insane to me that I've never heard of this movie <laughs> or seen it. You know, <laughs> he becomes like boy genius in the town and uh, yeah, he has powers. They don't do much with it. As an avid listener of this podcast, you would think I would remember that episode, <laughs> but it escapes me. Yeah. Um, it, it's one of our finest, like, found on TV movies. Yeah. But it, that's something we've really lost um, because part of what makes, to bring, to bring it back, I swear there's a point here, to bring it back to Zoolander, <laughs> one of the many things that makes this movie a cult success is that, like, people just kind of discover it. Yeah. Um, whether that's, you know, at the blockbuster and DVD or on TV. This movie has a second life. It's not initially very successful, but it has a second life through like the rediscovery um, via those older methods. And a, you don't really have that anymore. Right. And it's got it. Well, and now movies are getting the third discovery yeah. through memes. Yes. Which is a thing we have to talk about. Yes. With this movie. So like uh, the very weird tangent, but like ever since the Deadpool Wolverine trailer dropped, People are starting to use the scene from X Men Three: The Last Stand of Wolverine like cl clawing his way up to Jean Grey while getting like vaporized essentially, and it's all these like Sigma Bros being like, "When she's bad to you, but you get." <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? <laughs> when she's 
bad to you. <laughs> it's like when when you're when you're trying to like help somebody who's in a toxic part. I don't know. It's like yeah. some Sigma bro like thing with it. But and I only thought of that because it's like that had not been a meme format until people like watched the Deadpool Wolverine trailer and then like I guess started to think about the other movies and thought, oh, that would make a great meme format. And like Brett that. Ratner's X-Men The Last Stand. Exactly <laughs> what I want to be thinking about. Well, I shit you not. It literally is like, like I've seen like four of them now Yes, <laughs> on Instagram. I'm like, why are people <laughs> using this seed for a meme? <laughs> but the same thing is similar with uh, Zoolander. It's like yeah. all of a sudden, like we're getting the fucking... See, like, people don't even know what I'm playing for you guys, but just by the music alone, everybody knows the meme I'm talking about. Yeah. Right? It's like... <laughs> like Zool Zoolander did have a new life in TikTok recently. That's I what I mean. It's like... And there's other movies that are, like, getting new lives in TikToks in the shape of, like, little clippets. I don't think anybody's, like, watching these clippets and be like, I should watch X-Men through the last mm -hmm. stand. Like, I am. You are? Yeah, I'm like... Show me him picking up the bridge. It's a good scene. It's a good scene. Charles always wanted to build bridges. That's that line fucking whips. <laughs> oh <my laughs> That's Ian McKelly channel like Richard the mm. Third right there. <laughs> um, but to finish up this tangent before we get into the other tangents that will define this episode, Kelsey um, Grammer the Beast. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's, it's really good. Um, he he beast on my Kelsey Tilly Grammer. Um, <laughs> But the the thing about like I don't know if you saw this, but uh, the Criterion Channel introduced this thing called Criterion Twenty Four Seven, which is like they just play movies yeah. like it's a TV channel yeah. just on repeat. Yeah. Um. And since then, I've heard about multiple streaming services are starting to add channels, including Disney Plus, which is adding Disney channels. Oh yeah, I heard about that. They're just gonna play. Yeah, and it's like yeah, you can click on the Star Wars channel, and it will just be playing various Star Wars content twenty four seven that you can just turn into and catch a random thing. It could be playing the Phantom Menace. It could be playing the fucking holiday special. It could be playing the Bad Batch. Oh, sorry. Then not not the one I was going to going to click. That was a really bad poor first take yeah. on that. No, I was going to say like how how far have we fallen that we were reverting back to like the cable TV days from streaming. It's, it's everything is going back. Yeah. People are buying cable bundles of streaming services and they're all going to have channels. And it's going to be more expensive than the cable package yes, it, it, <laughs> that we were trying to save money from. And like as much as streaming is like, I think overall kind like at its base level, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Like the, the concept of it. Um, yeah. It's good. Like, yeah, I can look up a movie and watch it. That's yeah. great. That's a, that is a great thing that I don't necessarily have to buy the DVD or order it. If I want to watch a movie, I can get it right then. Right. Or you don't have to drive down the street yes. to a video store that might not have it yeah. because everyone else <laughs> wants to see the same movie. Yes. Like it's overall, I think a net good, but we, I, I think it, it's like indication that we lost something tangible about that time that people are like, sometimes like, yeah, I boot up a streaming service. There's 200 options. I don't know what I want to watch. Um, it is nice to just turn on the TV and flick through the channels and be like, oh, look, X-Men The Last Stand is playing. And you click on it and it's, it's like, like halfway through and you're like, yeah, I got yeah. 45 minutes. I'll watch the rest of this. It's a scene when who's the fucking actor that plays like the duplicate guy? <laughs> <laughs> Multiple man? <laughs> Multiple man. I don't know. The guy, he's in Grey's Anatomy. Just like in the most random yeah. spot. Or, and like, yeah, cool. Or um, like the main deciding factor if you click on it and it's a commercial or not. Yeah. That's like the, the the biggest deciding factor. But people kind of, I think people want to go back to that where it's like you would find a movie like Zoolander just playing on TBS or on whatever channel it was on and you like halfway through and you're just like, oh, this is a good scene. I want to watch this. And that's how this movie built its reputation is by that discovery. And, you know, people, you know, nowadays when they go on Disney Plus and they see the Marvel channel and they click on it and it's like halfway through Iron Man 3, you're going to be like, yeah, I'll watch the rest of this. And no one is going to say that. <coughs> I, would. I would. Iron Man 3, good. <laughs> Iron Man 3, a good movie. I, you know, you keep it's going to be a hot take. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I thought it was good when I first watched it. But looking back on it now, I just think Robert Downey Jr. is so insufferable. And he's just playing <laughs> himself, but with a lot more money than he actually has. <laughs> and that kind of takes me out of it. Listen, when playing yourself is a fine, good thing to do, 
I mean, it's gotten like, Ryan Reynolds a, mo- a movie every year for the last 15 years. Right, exactly. I am, Ryan Reynolds is not a good actor, I but I can't stand it. fucking sick of Ryan Reynolds. Y- yeah. You know what is funny? I think he's fine as Deadpool. Like, I actually in- don't inherently have a problem with Deadpool, even if those movies, like, aren't great. But it's any other thing that he's in, I'm so sick of him. I see the Free Guy. I watched Free Guy um, with my father-in-law. Um <laughs> say, I'll what a say, true bonding experience I'll say no more um, I've watched two movies with my father-in-law one of them is Roland Emmerich's Midway um, okay. which he, he sat me down and was like this is a real American movie and we sat there and we watched it in silence for two hours um, the other one was Free Guy <laughs> um, which well, I was just like yeah it's great <laughs> was he like laughing his ass oh, off he loved during, it. He yeah loved I was gonna say, it sounds like it's got like like boom that energy that movie has that i'm not i know we're not going to talk about free guy today i'm, I'm cutting the conversation off i, I think no. what you mean is we're not going to talk about zoolander today. <laughs> we're not yeah. talking about free guy <laughs> um but i i went to the movies last week and i swear to god we will talk about zoolander <laughs> but um it was like a really bizarre lineup of trailers because uh, it was when we were there. Or? No, it, it, because here, here's why it's bizarre. It's not going to seem bizarre when I first say it, but it was the Quiet Place Day One trailer. Oh, which I've only seen that 714 yeah, times. Which starts so. with a clip of John Krasinski in it. <clears throat> the next thing was a trailer for If, a John Krasinski directed movie starring Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. The next thing was The Fall Guy, a Ryan Gosling movie directed by David Leach, who directed Deadpool 2. Yeah. The next thing was um uh god what what movie was it it like also involves this lineup of people not deadpool and wolverine oh it was deadpool and wolverine okay a ryan reynolds movie directed by sean levy who did free guy <laughs> like oh my gosh what movie were you going to see where you saw these trailers um i think i'm trying to think it was it uh was it yesterday so the mummy no this was like this was like two weeks ago oh okay um i'm looking through what I've seen recently that would have been that movie. Um, it wasn't Spider-Man 2. It wasn't the first Omen. It was no one Godzilla was. X-Kong, The New Empire. That's what I was going to see when I got that lineup. That was a movie. That, that was a movie that yeah. I, I went to the theater and I was like, mm-hmm. all right. It, it really peaks <laughs> with that initial fight Shit. with Godzilla and the spider Monster. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the that happens in the credits, the, yeah, opening, credits. the opening credits. And then there's still an hour and like fifty minutes to go. I, I like I'm a little embarrassed, but I had this realization the, when I was watching Dream Scenario, yeah. actually, and I realized that partially to what you're saying about how like the similar lineup of yeah of creators and and cast and 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 stuff that. The trailers that ended up getting shown before the movies that you see are just the trailers, are mostly the trailers from the company yeah. that has that's distributing yeah. the movie. And I like have been going to movies for way too long to have just realized this mm-hmm. at the ripe age of thirty. Yeah, they, they they tailor them. The first, the last two you see will always be attached to the work print mm-hmm. or to the DCP file. So like you're always going to see two Warner Brothers trails right before Doom. But then the rest of them are like kind of tailored to the mm-hmm. interest of the movie. Which begs me to wonder why during Godzilla X Kong did I see this line about four movies essentially by the same guys? Yeah. That was what was really just like you would watch this lineup of trailers and you'd be like, I think there's only like three people working in the film industry right now. Yeah. I think it's David Lee, Sean Levy, and Ryan Reynolds and John Krasinski. Those are the four guys. Pretty much. Do you guys miss like the VHS days where it's like the commercials are baked into it? I miss like watching a vhs and uh, like a um we had a james bond film um the world is not enough mm-hmm. and I, I think we got it at like a, a like a library sale or whatever yeah. it was like a dollar and we were watching trailers from when like this was like in 2002 yeah. and I th- it came out in like the mid 90s right yeah so we're watching trailers for movies from like 1994 yeah and i do miss that i miss yeah. like having the trailers before the movie you would have like a time capsule of yeah. what was happening in the universe when yeah. this movie came out and then you know dvds happened and you could skip most of those trailers. Yeah. well you you could eventually skip them yeah but there was something cool about you know finding an old vhs and being forced to sort of sit in the world 
Uh, what was the world yeah. when you were watching yeah. this movie? What is this lineup? Yeah. Present like the feature presentation, mm-hmm. like all the, that shit. The yeah. worst thing is BD Live, which is Blu-ray Disc Live, mm. um, which is if you have like um, um, an Xbox or a Blu-ray player that's connected to the internet, and Universal mostly uses this. So you put Fast and Furious Six in or whatever, and it will boot up with trailers from the year you're watching the movie. It connects to the internet and pulls trailers onto the disc. Whoa. And streams I don't like them that. to you. I don't like that. That's and weird. It is weird. Look, imagine watching a trailer for Fast 10 <laughs> yeah. as you're getting ready to watch Fast that 6. That was actually truly what happened to me. Yeah. Is I watched Fast 6 and I got a trailer for F9. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Because back in 2021 when theaters reopened, like Fast 9 was like the first movie that was new release. And I was like, I haven't seen any of these movies, but I feel obligated to go see this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I watched all the first eight of them in like a two days. That's disgusting. Um, it was an insane day in my life. I was like, I felt like I was just drinking four locos. But I would, I would like put him in, and I get a trailer for Fast, and I'm like, I'm on six. Let's let's relax, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I have my ticket already. I'm going. Speaking of movies with unnecessary sequels, uh, Zoolander. Yes. Uh. <laughs> Back to Zoolander. Ultimately, the the point I was making around about there is like. You don't really get an ex- a movie like Zoolander nowadays that comes out flops, or I shouldn't say flops, but is unsuccessful, and then kind of has a reevaluation, rediscovery via just like people getting absorbed, like absorbing it through osmosis, like whether it's memes or if it's just on the TV or like a DVD rental at Blockbuster that's only three dollars. Yeah, um, it's hard for a movie to have that kind of you know ground cult groundswell nowadays. Yeah. Um, and that's why I'm excited to talk about Zoolander today. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I have emotions <laughs> to talk about Zoolander. Sam, why do you want to talk about Zoolander? I fucking love this movie. Yeah, Ooh. it's so dumb, and it's probably one of the worst written movies. Like, <laughs> I don't understand sometimes. There's like there's six people sitting in a room and they're yelling yeah. out lines, and then they like the line that gets chosen is this needs this it needs to be at least three times this size. Like yeah. how did they decide three was the number? Right. <laughs> like Derek Zoolander's stupid, right? Yeah. Yeah. But he's so stupid. He has no concept of scale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and why is it that saying a small 24 inch by 24 inch sculpture needs to be three times as large. <laughs> so fucking funny. It, it is like the rhythm of conversation and joke. And yeah. it's kind of like, I mean, it, I think, so much of these lines were they not delivered by Ben Stiller doing yeah. like the weirdest like what is that accent? I like, have what's that no voice? Idea. Right? <laughs> well, but why male models? Why male models? And then I mean <laughs> to your point, that question that that too. I yeah. mean, they write this whole scene. David Duchovny explains the entire plot of the film. And then Ben Stiller follows it up with but why male models? <laughs> and it's the funniest shit. And then we're all thinking the same thing. And then David Duchovny says the thing we're all yeah. thinking. Like, are you serious? I just explained it to you <laughs> moments ago. I, um, not to get on another tangent, but I went to go see a comedian a few weeks ago, Joe Para, um, who I'm a huge fan of. And he had this one joke that is a, a really good example of how, like, just something you don't think about, like, the rhythm of a joke and the wording inherently makes it fun. His joke was, he's just like standing up on the stage, he's like, you know, his joke is he plays like a middle-aged boomer. Um, he's like, you know, guys are always complaining about women taking too long to get ready. And I say, no, it gives you plenty of time to watch clips from Hobbit, Desolation of Smog on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the joke. And like, I, I said to my wife right after, I'm like, that joke is funny because he didn't include the in the name of the movie. <laughs> That joke doesn't work if he says, you can watch clips of The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog. It's funny because he just says, Hobbit, Desolation of Smog. (laughs) And like, how do you, like, what you were saying about three times, how do you come up with like, it's funny if I say Hobbit, Desolation of Smog. It's not funny if I say The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog. Yeah, like it's probably not funny if he says it needs to be 10 times as big. Yeah, right. it's not funny. That's just like, it's too much of a specific, it's too much of a generic number, right? Is it even funny if he says four times his size? I don't don't think so. (laughs) There's something about three times being the perfect scale for the joke. And maybe it's just the way he says three. I don't know. But like whoever came up, were there a bunch of takes? Did they say it over and over again? Maybe he he just did every number. Yeah. 
Yeah, did they just go all the way up till 30 and just see which one was the best? I don't know. And it was like, take three, three times as big. It's like, no, that one still works. Like, <laughs> circle that it's one. Right circle the it third is. one. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like, I don't know. There's just something. I f- this is one of, I feel like Zoolander and Anchorman live in a world where 60% of what, like, our generation says are just lines from that movie. Yeah. It's constantly. Yeah. And none of them are particularly good lines, and none of them really make sense in any yeah. context outside of the universe that is Zoolander. Yeah. But for some reason, like we just can't stop quoting. Yeah. yeah, so hot right now. So hot right now. I mean that. <laughs> I mean that meme has been around yeah. for fifteen years yeah. now. Like it's got longevity to it. And it's funny every time. Yeah. And then I mean I've seen Zoolander maybe twenty times, probably yeah. half as much as I've seen Swordfish. And. <laughs> um, like I, I forget every time that that's like a that line shows up three or four times in the yeah. movie. It's not just that one meme scene. Yeah, <laughs> he's just any time Hansel shows up, they were like, we got to cut away to Will Ferrell with his ridiculous hair, and he's got to <laughs> say that Hansel so hot right now, Hansel, and he always follows it up with his name a second time just to really shove the point home. Yeah. Hansel, Hansel. Uh, so so hot right now, Hansel. <laughs> I um for research for this podcast, I did watch Zoolander number two, oh. um yesterday morning. Um, you guys should thank me for what I've done for this show. Uh, the continued work I put in every day. Um, because while I am overall a fan of Zoolander, Zoolander number two is a sad exercise in diminishing returns. And um, I mean, he just said the other day that he felt, just yeah. a week ago, he felt really bad about making the movie because he thought people, he didn't thought like people wanted a second Zoolander. And... I mean, you know, to the point of how Zoolander 1 first came out and wasn't particularly well received. Like, I really, I mean, I get, and it did build up a following and we do all love it now. But to take that energy and then try and do the same thing, and it did, it flopped so horribly, but it has no legs, I think. And I've only seen the first half an hour. I couldn't take it anymore. Yeah, it's... Oh my gosh. (laughs) But I want to talk more about Zoolander 2 at the end after we talk about Zoolander, because I want to contrast what doesn't work in that movie. But the only reason I brought it up this early is because when we're saying Hansel so hot right now, at the end of Zoolander 2, do you guys mind if I just tell you what happens in Zoolander 2? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Will Ferrell is like holding a bomb in his hands that was going to be used to blow up like New York City. Um, and <laughs> and Han- <laughs> what? And he sees and he sees Hansel who like kicked the bomb at him, and he's like, Hansel, so hot right now. And then he explodes. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Will Ferrell is happening? killed in a explosion <laughs> to Hansel so hot right now. Um, back to Zoolander 1. <laughs> wow. You said Will Ferrell with a bomb about to blow up New York. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was Rome. It, it's some fucking... Rome? <laughs> it's some fucking city. Um, oh my God. Let me f- I'm going to quickly double check. Um, yada, yada, yada. I mean, how can I honestly like make a comparison this movie is about assassinating the malaysian prime minister the malaysian <laughs> prime minister who is trying to outlaw save child labor. his country yeah. yeah yeah increase wages improve the life of the country or uh, the life of citizens in its country yeah ban child labor like that that's the thing i had forgotten about this movie is like i remember all the jokes i'd forgotten that this is just a riff on like 70s conspiracy thrillers yes specifically yeah. the manchurian candidate i mean it opens in a dark room yeah we see nobody's faces yeah. right and it's the garment cabal <laughs> right the, <laughs> or the, the textile cabal excuse yeah. me with mugatu and the interrogation and his ugly dog yeah and it's i mean we're like thrown into this world yeah. where they're explaining how malaysia shouldn't have any rights for its citizens in order to keep it could, it, uh, uh, could clothes cheap, yeah. Yeah. And then we're supposed to like, and oh my God, Will Ferrell is like the absolute worst. I can't tell if this is his character <laughs> or if he just like phoned it in that day, but he's just delivering lines in half of an accent yeah. for the entire opening of the movie. And I for, kind of forgot how bad that that was. Yeah. And he later seems to fall into the Mugatu character. Yeah, he figures it out. Yeah, he figures it out and he gives it some texture. But in those first scenes, he's just kind of screaming. Yeah. Because the opening of the movie is they're like, Mugatu, Malaysia is going to destroy us. You have a week to figure this out. And he's like, all right, we got it. Yeah, it's like <laughs> that's basically. the energy of that opening. Scene. We have to find someone stupid. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's their whole plan. Is like they yeah. find like a, a very dumb person to kill the prime minister. Yes. Why? Have you ever seen The Manchurian Candidate? 
No, no I now know. I, I kind of wish that I had. So there, there are two of them. There's one that came out in 1955 starring Frank Sinatra, and there's a 2004 one with Denzel Washington. But the basic pitch of both movies is like a former, um, like a veteran who used to work, who was like in the war with this one, um, uh, uh, like fellow soldier mm-hmm. who was the son of a prominent politician. Um, that guy gets kidnapped by the opposing side in um, the original one. It's the Chinese in the more recent one. It's like a shadowy corporation called Manchurian global. And he comes back from the war and he seems a little different, but they're all okay with it. And then 10 years later, that guy's being positioned as the president of the United States, like running for president. Mm. And slowly this, the main character starts to discover that this guy was taken and brainwashed. Oh no, he's, he's being positioned as the vice president. He's being brainwashed. He was brainwashed um, when he was kidnapped to after the presidential ticket is elected to assassinate the president and then become the president so that he can rule America under the control of this corporation or other country. That's the pitch of the movie. I mean, like low key, if you can pull that off, I yeah. feel like you deserve to run yeah. the country for four <laughs> years. Like I, that's yeah. just how it works. But it is it's like just this insane conspiracy movie about like discovering that this guy's been brainwashed and all the various conspiracies upon conspiracies through it. It's basically the exact same plot as Zoolander um, in terms of the execution of the discovery and whatnot. Zoolander did it first. (laughs) So it's just really funny to think about this and be like, no, this is just the Manchurian candidate. And I found this, um, this uh, oral history of Zoolander Vanity Fair article. And Ben Starr is like, yeah, Manchurian candidate was my big inspiration for this. And I'm like, this is insane. This this movie's about a dumb <laughs> male model, and you're citing one of the great paranoid thrillers of the era. <laughs> Wild. Oh, my goodness. What's truly tremendous about Zoolander, I think, is it gave us Alexander Skarsgård. Mm-hmm. Yes. I it mean, did. Who, who, would he have put, who would have been in succession were it not for Zoolander? As Amicus. Know? We launched... Zoolander launched his career, arguably. <laughs> he was the... I mean, he he's one of the only, he's the only one of those guys who comes back in the second one. Oh, does he? Yeah, but he plays Adam oh, of oh, Adam yeah. and Eve. Because obviously they. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The I, I keep forgetting about that part of the movie. <laughs> I really only remember the child from Zoolander two. Zoolander two, no good. Um, but yeah, Alexander Sarsgaard comes out of this. What does he say? So Earth, hot right now. Earth to Brint. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> My wife walked into me watching the movie and was like, is that Alexander Scarzer, my guy? And I'm like, you fucking know it is. Watch the next scene and it was the gas fight. And, he's uh, like, and I'm like, he's not in the rest of the movie. Someone oh. had to point it out to me. And then I was watching last night or yeah. two nights ago. And I, I still don't think I would. If someone hadn't said something to me, I wouldn't have been like, oh, that's Alexander Skarsgård. He just looks, I mean, from who he is in Infinity Pool. Yeah. To <laughs> this. To, to that. And it's only been 20 years. Yeah. Like, it's such a... Talk about a glow up. I yeah. mean, it's two totally different characters. A totally different guy. He's he's chiseled out. Yes. Uh, yeah. He's, like, fully sculpted. He looks like a Greek statue now. I mean, like, watching him in, like, The Northman. <laughs> Stuart, what, how many minutes are we into this recording so far? Not enough. About 30. Okay. I just want to say, we haven't said the words Winona Ryder yet during this episode. <laughs> That's true. I mean, she doesn't show up till minute 39. Yeah. So we've got <laughs> about very, 10 minutes. <laughs> That's so true. This is a Winona Ryder podcast. Uh, uh um, before we, I think we're basically ready to just start talking about like, the plot of this movie. Um, yeah. I want to do a little context. Um, I'm, we should say not the first Ben Stiller directed movie we've covered on yes. this season so far. We covered reality bites. Yes. Have you seen reality bites? I have not. It's not great. It's also it's, not, it's like not, good. It's not terrible. It's like good. It, no, it's all right. It's like, it's okay. It's like solid, solid six. Yeah. It's like it's a solid a six gentleman or six. It's weird to me how Ben Stiller, the duality of Ben Stiller, right? There's Zoolander, right? Yeah. And then there's Severance. Severance. (laughs) And there just doesn't seem to be anything in the middle. It's either it's either good or it's it's He's like deeply self serious. Yeah. Um, and I don't mean that as an insult necessarily, but it's like your secret life's a Walter Mitty severance. Or Zoolander and Zoolander number two. Yeah. Where does Reality Bites fall into this? Reality Bites is like it's a like, seri- it's, it's like, like a Secret Life of Walter Mitty. It's like a serious movie. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's his attempt to make a serious movie. But then We're, he also make, makes like The Cable Guy. He did The Cable Guy? He did do The Cable Guy. The one with um, Jim Carrey? Yeah, the movies Ben Stiller's directed are Reality Bites, The Cable Guy, Zoolander, and then Tropic Thunder, 
Oh, yeah, Tropic Thunder. Secret Life of Walter Mitty, Zoolander 2. All right, well, are... Tropic, Tropic Thunder and Cable Guy are pretty gas. I put those yeah. up there with Severance. Yeah, I, Tropic Thunder is great. Um, yeah. Uh, that's a maybe his, his probably his best movie. Yeah. Do plan to do disguise as another dude. But no, you're right. This isn't the first time we've talked about Ben Stiller on this show because we did cover Reality Bites, a movie starring Winona Ryder. She's the lead of that movie. Yeah. And I read a lot about the production of Zoolander, and this movie really was just Ben Stiller calling in a lot of favors. Um, Like almost any scene in this movie, there's a favor that he called in, whether it's a cameo, whether it's a place they could film. His dad. His dad. <laughs> his brother-in-law. His brother-in-law. His wife. His wife. <laughs> Who's his brother-in-law? Uh, he's the guy that says, and cut, at like the director at the very end <laughs> yeah. of the movie. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. That. But he's calling in all these favors uh, to yeah. make this movie. And one of them is that he's like, hey, Winona, remember that movie that I directed you in that did really well and you got <laughs> some good notices out of it? Did it do really well? Well, he, this is him talking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And she's like, yeah, I remember. And he's like, you want to come do like a scene on this where you tell me how hot I am? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, sure. Flawless plan. Yes. Flawless execution. Yeah. It, it, hey, she showed up and she did it. She showed up. She there, did it. There's so many cameos that until you texted me the list for Winona Riders, well, the, the movies that she was in Zoolander. I didn't remember she was in Zoolander. I mean, the, the half of the credits is just like this actress person slash himself. actor himself, herself. Yeah. Well, I mean, Stuart, you texted me pretty early in the movie that you were watching, and you're like, did I miss her? And I'm like, no, you won't miss her. It's coming. Yeah, because I I, that's, I texted you that because like, I was getting like fastballed so many cameos. I'm yeah. like, oh, my God. like I really got to pay attention yeah. to find Winona. And then, no, you don't. No, she, she's, has, she is she's actually a prominent cameo. She's not someone who they just got on a red carpet. She's like actually in the movie. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I got a little high when I was watching the movie because I'd never done that before yeah. when watching Zoolander and figured this was a good opportunity. This was a good time. And I kept asking my partner, and I was like, did we... Has Winona Ryder showed up and I just was like, wasn't paying attention. <laughs> it was like, I was on my phone a little bit, yeah. you know? And I kept being like, oh my God, like, where is she in this movie? Yeah. Like, how do they, how could they possibly fit her in? And then it cuts to the club, uh, the club, but it's like a close up of Winona Ryder's <laughs> yeah. face. Like she's, it's, she just is the frame yeah. mm-hmm. telling Ben Stiller how hot he is. And then I, I think there's, there's something to that, that Winona is one of the only cameos in the movie that really gets like a few lines, a, a dedicated scene. Yeah, it's like her. Obviously, David Bowie, mm-hmm. Billy, Zane. Billy Zane. Yeah, um, and those two are like more substantial. Without Derek Zoolander, male modeling wouldn't be what it is today. Stuart, you I can't completely do this to forgot us. about that. You cannot do this right now. <laughs> I am hold on that fucking topic until we start going through this movie. <laughs> We're finishing the Winona context, and then we'll talk about that. <laughs> I've never seen I Jeff think, more no, pissed. I think there's something to be said uh, about where Winona's at in her career. It was funny because you pulled that up right when I was starting to like get into the actual Winona meat of this. <laughs> Just, you like launched a bomb, a, uh, like a Hansel esque bomb at me. Yeah. Um, but because we're picking up with Winona on kind of the downswing of her career right now. But she's still riding a bit of a high, just as like the '90s it girl, yeah, as like the the actress of the '90s, um, in a sense. Mm-hmm. And so I think it says something like they they don't just put her in as like a, a cheeky little cameo on a red carpet. Like they give her a, a role with a line to inherently get the audience back. Like, hey, Winona Ryder, that's great. Yeah, um, that's cool that they got her to be in this. And it's also, I think, for her, a smart move with where her career is at because she's in a bit of career rehab right now. Mm -hmm. Um, She hasn't yet had the shoplifting scandal, um, but she's been on a run of unsuccessful movies for her, Uh, starting with The Crucible that we talked about. It's like Alien Resurrection, Celebrity, Girl Interrupted, Autumn in New York, Lost Souls. That's been the run. Yeah. Um, Hasn't really been doing great for her. So this is much like we've talked about, um, like Travolta in Goldmember. It's a smart move to put yourself in a cameo in a movie like this. Yeah. So people can have that recognition of the yeah. stardom you once The recognition of had. you, the stardom of you, just a reminder that you're that you're there. Yeah. And also just putting yourself, you know, in contention with these other celebrities of this stature. You're like you're literally putting a celluloid silver screen like marker on where you're at right now. 
Yeah. It's like Travolta being in the end of Gold Member. That's like him saying, yeah, I'm up here with Tom Cruise and uh, Danny DeVito and all these guys. That's that's the level we're at. Winona Ryder getting a substantial scene in this movie being like, yeah, you know, me, Ben Stiller, you know, this is like the level that I'm at right now. Um, And so like ultimately her career does just, you know, implode in a year or two um, because of exterior forces. Yeah. Um, I do think this is a smart move on her end in terms of just being in this for a little bit. And I'm sure she had fun being with Ben Stiller. They seem to work really well together. Yeah. Does he work with uh, her again? No, not that I'm aware of. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting They never pair up again. They did uh, Reality Bites this, and then she takes a break shortly after this movie, um, and then Ben Stiller goes off and does his own thing. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe they'll, they'll do something again in the future. Cameo and Severance, we'll see. Yeah, Severance season three. But, um, and then, you know, something to be said about the making of this movie, because it isn't just um, that this movie comes out of a vacuum. This movie did come about because in two, 1996 um, is when they first did the VH1, like, Fashion Awards. Yeah. And I think MTV, no, VH1 was the channel. VH1 subsidiary of Paramount was hosting it. And they're like, Do, will people think this is too self-serious? VH1 that we're doing a owns fashion e, show. right? Yeah. That makes sense because like all the microphones in the yeah in the beginning have the big E logo with the yeah. exclamation point. They're like, is this too um, self-serious? Like, will people think like they're doing a fashion award show? Are you serious? Mm-hmm. So they hired, um, I can't remember exactly who they hired. But they're basically like, we want to do some comedy skits through this. Mm-hmm. Just like in between, you know, after commercial breaks... We'll have a variety of comedy skits um, of just sending up various people in the fashion industry, whether it's designers or models, yada, yada, yada. Um, this guy, what's his name? Uh, Drake Sather, who's been, who's like Ben Stiller's writing partner, uh, comes up with the idea for this one about this dumb male model. He's like, I want to put Ben Stiller in it. I'm going to name him Derek Zoolander after this uh, Dutchman named Mark Vanderloo, who's the Calvin Klein uh, model and he and Ben Stiller you know come up with the idea together and they're like let's do a little short Ben Stiller's like what if this flops I'm kind of trying to like be serious you know establish myself and he's like we'll film it the show is pre-recorded if it doesn't play we'll cut it out of the broadcast and so they put it up huge hit with the crowd mm-hmm. um, VH1 um, later like wasn't a big fan of it like they're like this was supposed to be a serious fashion show and you're just lampooning us um after they were like we should put comedy yes. skits in it yeah but um stiller is con- like kind of encouraged by it it goes viral in the sense that something in the late 90s could go viral mm-hmm. um and they're like what if this was a movie um he was buoyed by the success of austin powers He's like, oh, that was just like a skit character, and they turned him into a really successful movie. What if I did that for Zoolander? Hmm. And that's really where this movie comes about. Um, it takes them a while to crack the the idea of how to make this a feature length movie because it is just like a two minute skit, pretty much. And it was still it was like, what if it's just the man drink, <laughs> but with Derek Zoolander, but with Derek Zoolander, yeah, the dumb male model, yes. Um, and that's how this movie comes about. Um. The Grand Saga. And we are all better for it. Films in the year 2000 for a very low budget. Uh, It's filmed for $28 million. Um, It seems like they were really up against the wall budget-wise during this movie. They could not go over 12 hours. They had very strict requirements on timing and what was each actor was allowed to be paid and whatnot. But how still, you know, really called in a lot of favors for this, including Winona. How much of the budget do you think was that gas station explosion? Um, I would say at least a million. <laughs> it right. had to be a good percentage, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, like you said, a lot of favors being called in. I'm sure there were a lot of folks that were working well below scale yes. for the movie. Everyone was probably making just like at scale at best. Yeah. Oh, maybe this thing could be a movie. <laughs> um, but that's uh, that's that's the context for how this movie gets made. And obviously, like once we talk, get towards the end of the plot, there'll be more some post yeah. text. There'll be some fun facts Maybe as we go through the making of the movie. Fun, fun, fun facts yeah. about this movie's release. Yeah, um, it's it's funny you talk about VH1 
being displeased with the Zoolander skit because in those first 10 minutes, they absolutely, I see, I didn't know that fashion show was real. I thought they made that up. Um, and in those first 10 minutes, they absolutely skewer that fashion show yeah. with Fabio up there talking about oh. how he's proud to be a male model slash, slash actor, actor. Yeah. not actor slash model. And here's the funny thing. They filmed that at an actual VH1 fashion show. Is that real? <laughs> yeah. That's a real VH1 fashion show. They were allowed to film during the commercial breaks. Oh, okay. But that's... Oh, man. It was live broadcast. And so um, they were like, we had Ben Stiller in a chair. We had the steady cam operator just standing there. They went to commercial break. All right, we're rolling. And they would just film him running up to the stage uh, doing his acceptance speech. All right, we got 30 seconds. Everyone back to their seats. They run back to their seats. Roll. All right, we're live. The rest of the show would continue. Wow. And just during That's the commercial crazy. break, they would just is nuts. knock off bits of the movie. That is crazy. Uh, the mean? audience was apparently like very confused, but they were in on it. Um, they were like, all those clips at the beginning of the movie, uh, interviews on the red carpet were all real attendees of this fashion show. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were just like, hey, Ben, we're filming a movie with Ben Stiller. He's playing a guy named Derek Zulander. Can you just say some things about how hot he is? Which is how we get the first post-Mugatu clip of the movie. Which, Stuart, you already played an audio clip of it. Do you care to elaborate? <laughs> Who the first person we see in this movie after the opening Wolf Herald scene is? We see the man. Donald Trump. They're saying he's incredible. <laughs> he's beautiful. He's amazing. Um, yeah, this is the second time we've had to fucking talk about Donald Trump on this show. This is the second Winona Ryan movie he's cameoed What in. other movie is he in? He was in Celebrity. Without Derek Zoolander, male modeling wouldn't be what it is today. <laughs> Without Derek Zoolander, male modeling wouldn't be what it is today. Yes. Um, Why was that cameo so much more fun when this movie came out? Yeah. No, that's the thing about Trump is that like, he used to be really funny and like, he's still, I, I want to say, I don't support Donald Trump in any way, but he still is funny, but in like kind of a morbid way in, you know, the early two thousands and the nineties, he was just like funny in like a, a look at this like idiot rich guy way. He was like the, the personal like chimpanzee of, of New York city. And yeah. everyone knew who he was. Yeah. Everyone and knew- having a cameo was fun. Yeah. David Letterman would put him, he would just, when he didn't have a guest, he would just invite Trump to come on because he was funny. Yeah. That was like Letterman's bit. And, you know, he's in this, he's in Home Alone, he was in Celebrity. Um, there's a lot more movies he was in. We read them all off in Celebrity. I'm not going to do it again. Well, um, we asked, like, you know, one of the things to, like, shoot on, like, a Trump property is he has to get a cameo. Yes. Do you think there was a similar thing with this? No, this is just, just he, this is just that he was a New York socialite and he attended fashion he shows. He just been there, yeah. He was just there in the line. They're like, hey, Don, you want to do a scene for this movie? And he's like, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And so he, they're just like, Derek Zoolander played by Ben Stiller. He looks beautiful. And what does the Don always talk about, if not how people look beautiful? <laughs> they're coming up to me, tears in their eyes. <laughs> um. It's such a time capsule, this movie. Yes. I mean, like, first off, Donald Trump. I mean, flip phones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Although his was so small. Yeah. (laughs) It's really Um, tiny. So, so small. I mean, fashion awards on VH1. I, like, forget VH1 is a channel. Yeah. Um, I don't even have cable. Constantly. Yeah. I don't even have cable. I don't even know. Like, what was, like, VH1's, like, thing? I mean, they would do all those dating shows like oh, The Next Bus or whatever. Right. Which okay. is the only thing I remember about VH1 because it was supposed to be like entertainment news, but that's also what E was. Right. And then VH1 would do like what, like best of the 80s, best of the 90s? Or Drunk History, was that a VH1 thing? I opened up VH1, their website, to see what they're currently showing. Um, it's Basketball Wives, Basketball <laughs> Wives LA, Basketball Wives Orlando. Oh, that's the good one. <laughs> <laughs> Orlando. Oh, my God. Orlando that everyone forgets is like a major city in America. Or I guess just Florida, really. Yeah, Florida, <laughs> uh, deeply forgotten state. And aren't we lucky? I just well, watched Civil War. Yeah. Like this this weekend. And it was funny how it's like, there's this, all this talk about like, you know, the Western forces and all that stuff. And like the Florida Alliance. <laughs> yeah, there's like nobody cares about my that. favorite nobody part about, about the Florida Alliance is it gets defeated in the first seven seconds of the film. <laughs> yeah. Like 
like Nick Offerman is talking and he's like, just so you know, we don't have to worry about them. And we do later learn, obviously, yeah. that he was he had a little hubris regarding the Western forces. But the Florida Alliance never researches, right? <laughs> yeah. They never fix their supply lines. Yeah. And no. they're right there. D.C. is like 500 miles yeah. away. Yeah. Fucking California and Texas are not close. Yeah, they had to go across the entire continent. They have to go all the way to Charlottesville. And then they suffer, what, four days of delay? <laughs> like... And they take the White House fairly fucking easy, <laughs> easily. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, I know the movie just came out. And this is probably a spoiler. But my biggest beef with that whole movie is like the Secret Service killed literally nobody. Mm. They were there waiting. They yeah. had guns. They were in the hallway. And the Western forces just almost quite literally just like walk in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that shootout is pretty tense. Yeah. Um, they do succeed at killing one person. Um, the main character. That we of the should, movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they do kill her, we, but no, no, they kill no one who has a gun. Yes. Um, I like Civil War. I like Civil War too. It was I, a good movie. I yeah. thought Civil War. Um, was very. Uh, you know what? Maybe we just shouldn't talk about Civil War. Maybe I shouldn't get into it. <laughs> um, we we are still on the opening scene of Zoolander. <laughs> Forty six anyway, minutes. Time capsule. Yeah, time capsule. <laughs> Zoolander 2, also a time capsule. That movie ends with Neil deGrasse Tyson doing Blue Steel. Oh my That's the God. final frame of Zoolander 2. Wow. Um, back to 2001. So, but yeah, we're at this VH1 fashion show. Um, and we're just getting all these various celebrities on the red carpet, uh, just telling their thoughts on Derek Zoolander. Um, Donald Trump says he's a beautiful man. Um, a very young Natalie Portman implies she wants to sleep with Derek Zoolander. A very young, like, I was like, who the... Natalie Port, where did she come from? Yeah. She's just on the red carpet. <laughs> yeah. This is in between Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, Natalie Portman. Wow. So she's like, you know, just becoming the senator of Naboo. So this is after uh, Leon the Professional. Yeah, this will be after Leon the Professional. Yeah. She's been in, she's been in like a decent bit of so movies. She's, like, she's in her like. Yeah, she's, she's been in Leon the Professional. She's been in Heat. She's been in yeah. um, Mars Attacks, amongst others. Um, this is in between like the two stars movies when her career is really starting to take still off. like a teenager though. She's like early twenties, I think. Early but 20s. she looks like she I looks forgot like how much a teen. she for like ten years she just looked like she was sixteen. Yeah. And I, I saw her and I was like, How old is she in this movie? She would have been nineteen or twenty yeah. when they filmed this movie. Okay. Gotcha. That that is the funny part of those Star Wars prequels, is that like in between Phantom Menace and Death Clones there's like a ten year time jump. Right, and, um, and, and they just... And she ages two years. Yeah, she ages two years. Like, they hire a brand new person to play Anakin, <laughs> and she ages, like, two years. Yeah. And then they're like, yeah, you guys are going to hook up now. <laughs> that's, the, that's that movie. Supposed to be normal. You remember him yeah. when he was a child. She was the queen of Naboo at, like, 16. Now sleep with him. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here. For, why is sci-fi so weird? <laughs> like, it could just not be... <laughs> and I feel like especially sci-fi writers from like the 50s, 60s, and 70s just chose the nuclear option of being strange. <laughs> yes. Like, yeah. and you could have just not done that. And now when we make movies yeah. based on that, that subject material, we have to like drastically alter some of the mechanics of the universe. You're, so it's not You're creepy. dancing around saying Dune. <laughs> yeah, mostly Dune, that's the problem. <laughs> but that's just the most famous example, yeah. right? You were specifically avoiding saying <laughs> Dune. <laughs> Those movies are just so magical. Those I movies refuse are, to great. say anything bad about them. They're, they're great. They're, you know, my desert, my Arrakis, my Dune. Favorites the uh, Timothy Chalamet. It's like, hello, everybody. My name is Paul Matty Petrady. <laughs> <laughs> it like switches so, between the Willy Wonka and the Paul Atreides voice. Mm. They make Good. fun of, of Nicolas Cage from going to whispering to yelling almost immediately. And all Dune really is, is Timothy Chalamet just doing that yeah. over and over and Look over again. Look at how your Benny Jesser propaganda is taking foot. I am Paul Matty Petrady. I mean, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know who's not at this VH1 fashion show? Timothy Paul Muad Paul Paul <laughs> Um But Natalie Portman sure is, um, amongst others. But we're, we kind of get like the, the baseline of who Derek Zoolander is, that he's the most famous male model in the world. Yeah. Three-time male model uh, best, of the year. Yeah, yeah. best male best model. Best male model yeah. of the year winner. Defending his fourth title against Hansel. So yes. hot right now. Hansel's so hot right now. Hansel played by Owen, Owen Wilson. Wilson. Yes. 
who I got to say, and I, it was in like the IMDb trivia that like Ben Stiller wrote that for Owen Wilson and did not yeah. want anybody else to play that role. Thank God. Thank God. Cause he is, I'm just saying like Owen Wilson, he's great in this. He's fucking, it might be his best role. I, and he's great. I, in I, it Crashers. might be his best role. Like, wow. And I'm an Owen Wilson fan, by the way. Like, I don't deny that he's, not a great actor, but like you still love him just like for a lot of lovable person. He's a lovable person. Like, and I love him in black Hawk down or whatever. No, it's behind enemy lines or whichever fucking one. He's definitely not black Hawk. (laughs) I can tell you that it's behind enemy lines then. Right. Okay. Sorry. There's (laughs) There's throwing out things about any war movie. 1917. (laughs) (laughs) That's the one he was in. Right. What, What movie are you claiming he's in? Is oh he, yeah, he is in behind. He's enemy in lines. behind enemy lines. I think With Black Gene Hawk Hacker. Down is similarly also a behind enemy lines esque like movie, isn't it? It is. It's yeah. similar in scope, but it's got um, Orlando Bloom oh, and right. another one of the '90s heartthrobs in it, whose name I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I don't think he's actually that great of an actor. I just love Owen Wilson. He's inherently funny. He has a funny personality. Yeah, yeah, and he's very lovable. And so, like seeing him like chew up this role is is great and he is hot he is so hot right now. he is so hot right now what is kind of funny to me is like i mean the two hottest models in the industry like they show us fabio right yeah Yeah. and we all remember him from our childhood he was in every commercial like and it was just the weirdest talk about a time capsule fabio is like a perfect example of what like the late 90s early 2000s were he was on tv all the time yeah famous for being fabio Yeah. yeah yeah But like Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson, I would not say are like conventionally good looking people (laughs) to play models. And yet we just we're like thrust into this universe and told that the two hottest people right now Mm -hmm. are these two dudes. Yeah. And you buy it. And one of them has really bad blonde crimped hair and rides around on a scooter. (laughs) And it's just like it's so strange. But we just we're forced to accept it and we're, we're forced into this universe in this opening sequence mm-hmm. that Donald Trump gives us. And then like, that's just the movie from here on out. We just have to live with them. This movie yeah. really relies on Trump to just like set Sell the stage it. to just be like, yeah, he's the hottest guy right now, Derek Zoolander. And you're like, okay, Mr. President, <laughs> um, whatever you say. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, Fabio's up there talking about being a, a male model slash actor. Uh, to present the Male Model of the Year award, and he presents he announces that the winner is Hansel McDonald. But Derek Zoolander gets goes up, up to accept the award. Yeah, and he does his little strut up to the stage. He's like, "Wow, you know, people said I couldn't win this." Well, f- wait, there's been a mistake. Lenny Mo- Kravitz, Moonlight, you guys won Best Picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is, isn't Lenny Kravitz? Oh no, it's Lenny Kravitz. You're like, so uh, Fabio has just accepted the award yes. for Best Actor slash Model, yes, you're right. not Model slash Actor. You're correct. And then Lenny Kravitz is up there. He's like, all right, now to the real awards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now to the real awards. But Derek Zoolander then gets all the press about like dumb male model looks like tries to steal award. And then he gets really depressed and he goes back to his uh, home. Also, we, this is where we get like Christina Taylor uh, in the movie too, who's a reporter for yeah. the no name, like no, the magazine no one's ever read before uh, uh, called a uh, uh, people's time magazine. Yeah. Uh, so um, she's trying, she's doing a story on like, it's she's just, doing a story on, on Derek condi- Zoolander. Yeah. On Derek Zoolander. She's doing a story on Derek Zoolander, but she thinks she can use Derek Zoolander to get to Mugatu. So she yes. can ask him about conditions in Malaysia. Yes. <laughs> yes. So ultimately, she's like trying to write this piece in order to gain gain access to, you know, people she can't normally get in contact with. Yeah. Also, when Will Ferrell is on the red carpet and they're all protesting and there's these like protesters who run and throw like, I think, eggs at yeah. him. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's Ben Stiller's mom. <laughs> that's who that was. <laughs> yeah. She's yeah. the woman who runs out into the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's throws great. eggs at him. Yeah, yeah Mugatu's getting assailed by, he is also at the fashion show. He's getting assailed by... Um, protesters for poor working conditions mm-hmm. in Malaysia and his opposition to the the new prime minister of Malaysia. Right. Yeah. Who is uh, too woke. <laughs> <laughs> you, you used to be able to be fashionable before woke. Yeah. 
It's just kind of crazy to me because like they concocted this whole insane plan for a male model to kill the prime minister of Malaysia when the CIA was just going to do that in like six <laughs> yeah. months. They're, they're it gonna was do really anyway. going to be like a small bump in the road, but ultimately we were going to topple that government <laughs> yeah. and yeah. replace it with one that was more friendly. So like they, there's a whole lot of whole, much ado about nothing, I really <laughs> yeah. think, you know. Mugatu didn't have to go to prison for this. He did not know. have to go to prison for it. He didn't have to plan it. They, you know, they, they hold this threat of taking away the... His, his clothes making from him yeah. and force him to do this. Poor guy. The real yeah. victim in this story. <laughs> Jacobin Mugatu. Jacobin Mugatu. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Mugatu sees uh, Zoolander accept the award for someone else and realizes this is my idiot. Yeah. This is my guy. As he asks in the beginning of the film, right at the end of that conversation with the cabal, yeah. like, who in the world is dumb enough? Like, who, who yeah. am I going to find? And then we get a hard cut to yeah. Derek Zoolander entering the fashion, the fashion show. show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but he, Zoolander goes home after, you know, embarrassing himself in front of the entire world. We see Alexander Skarsgård. Yeah, to his, to his, three, uh, his three roommates. Whose um, names are very funny. I'm Mikus, trying to Mikus, Todd, and Brent. Is that the last one? Is it Brent? It's like an I, I think. I'm trying to figure out who it plays. Um. The, the Wikipedia list only has those two, um, but I, I, I very much feel like we're mi- well, I'm, it's missing someone. Because like- he says, Earth to Brint, that was a joke. <laughs> yeah, Mikas, Brint, yeah, Brint. and yeah. Rufus. Yeah, <laughs> Mikas, Brint, Rufus. Correct. Excellent. Also, can we just take a moment to acknowledge that this has been Alexander Skarsgård's IMDb uh, profile photo for the, well, like 10 years now? What yeah. the fuck? Yeah. So, okay, watching, but watching Zoolander, like, I would not. You wouldn't think it. I don't think that, I, I barely think that looks like him. I I watched something with him recently, and he's starting to, like, be a little more like Stellan, and I think that's good. He's, like, turning a little more into Stellan. I'll take it. Yeah. Um, I think that's a major victory. I'm a big Stellan guy. Well, he's finally following in Bill's footsteps. Yeah. Becoming Stellan and Dune. <laughs> My Arrakis, my Dune. Yeah, the desert takes the weak. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, uh, so they're like, you know, well, I know what can cheer you up: orange mocha frappuccino. frappuccino which immediately, first thing I thought of was like orange mocha frappuccino. It sounds horrible. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> like a nightmare. But, but I mean, we ha- we have a conversation first in this apartment where we discover that not only is Derek Zoolander dumb, but everyone else is too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I mean, this nasty ass drink just kind of makes sense. Yeah. And what follows <laughs> makes it also make more sense too. So they are in like a a convertible, uh, driving down the streets of New York, yeah. singing some song. They're, in- they're saying jitterbug. Yeah. yeah. Jitterbug did to my brain. Yeah, they're in a uh, like a drop top Jeep kind of thing. Like a land cruiser. Almost like a dude bu- bu- buggy or something yeah. like that. And, um, that's when they pull over to a gas station. <laughs> Wake me up before you go. go. Leave me hanging on like a yo yo. Stuart. <laughs> well, and they're all in color coordinated outfits. Yes, too. yes. They're very obnoxiously dressed, and their apartment is color coordinated in the same way. Oh, I didn't them. even notice. Like that. everything yes. is this their colors. Yeah, uh, the bunk beds are all the same. Yeah, oh, that's funny. I had no clue. Yeah, but they pull into this gas station. They fill up on gas, and they also take out like the windshield wiper things. And they're they're fighting and with the, windshield. They start fighting with it all. And and at first, uh, at first. I was watching this with my girlfriend. She's like, "Who? Like, you don't know what's in that stuff." Yeah. And then they started. And you're like, "Dude, it gets worse. <laughs> it gets worse." Because then they pull out the fucking gas pumps. <laughs> yeah, they start fighting with gas. They start fighting with gas, and that's when Derek Zoolander sees like on this like brick wall, like a a, a whole like advertisement with uh, Hansel yeah. on it. Mm-hmm. So he steps away and is looking at it, and then he turns over, and one of his buddies. Pulls out a fucking cigarette and yeah, a lighter. Like, like no. no. Well, he also he also sees a guy throw into the trash can a Time magazine, a Time magazine with his picture on oh, it. Oh, right. And in that, ma- yes. and he goes up to it and he pulls it out of the trash can and he sees it's about him being dumb yeah. as hell. Yeah. 
Also, Time Magazine, not a cheap magazine to buy. No, it's not a magazine you buy and then it, like, immediately you look at the cover out. and immediately throw out. It's insane. <laughs> yeah, this is like psychopath behavior. And like another thing, and, and maybe this is me overthinking it, but, you know, I don't know what it was like buying gas in 2001 because I was eight. <laughs> but like presumably now to do this scene. Yeah. All of the male models would have had to put their cards into various <laughs> different gas pumps, yeah. right? And yeah. then just start pumping four dollars a ga- four dollars a gallon everywhere. Mm. Yeah. But inexplicably, yeah. in the, the short amount of time it takes him to walk from yeah. the front of his car to this trash can, the models have all taken gas yeah. pumps out and are just spraying each other with gas. They each have one. They, everyone. This has is a one. more trusting. There's four gas pumps. This is a more <laughs> trusting time. Yeah. I was in Wisconsin last week or Minnesota. And I went up to a gas pump and there was no card thing. So I went inside. I'm like, hey, um, do I pay prepay? And they're like, no, just start filling up. And I'm like, and then what? And then they're like, yeah, come inside and pay me after. And I'm like, oh. So I just went outside and I just filled my car with gas. And then I went inside and I paid. That's so strange. Like, the machine just was on. It was like, it's so bizarre. It was like a really small town in Minnesota. Um, but this does bring up a, an interesting point about this movie. This Can movie... Can I say something real yeah. quick? Because to that point about gas, what's always weirded me out, is, and I went to one of these gas stations. I for some reason it was like in Colorado, but you see them more in like the Pacific Northwest or I'm trying to think of the area where they pump your gas for you. Yeah. Oh, well, that's Oregon and New Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah. Okay. What is the deal with that? It's a law. Really? So they have. I, I think I don't think it's still in Oregon. Yeah, Oregon in, just repealed it recently. In New Jersey, you're not allowed to pump your own gas. What? So it's. I. I mean. Well, the, sure worst, the worst state all in the union. Is, I mean, what do you do? Do you just like pull up to the pump and ring a well, bell? Stuart, no, there's a guy. There's, there's just a guy who a, just stands there. At every pump, there's an attendant. And it's the strangest experience because you pull up and you just like your first reaction is to get out of your car. Yeah. right? But you can't get out. Of, you don't get out of your car. You can. That's but it's scary. Weird. <laughs> and someone comes up and you lower your window and you tell them, you know, you know, I want 93 yeah. or 87 or whatever. And you tell them how much you want, 25 or you fill the tank up or whatever. And then and he, they're wearing a high res vest, high vis vest, right? So it's like orange or, or neon mm-hmm. yellow, so they don't get hit. And then they fill up your car, and you just never get out. Yeah. It's the most uncomfortable. It's a, it's as uncomfortable as when you go to one of those hand car washes in Chicago. Yeah. Except it takes way less time. Because then, what if you want to like get out and go to the gas station you can and if buy you want. something? You can, but you would stop filling up. You would once you were done filling up, you would then go. You have to. Do you yeah. have to move or, your car, or, or can your you partner your car would get the- out of the car and go in. No, you don't leave your car there because what if someone else needs to use? Because that that's something that I agree. The one thing I would say I would agree with is like I'm so sick and tired of people pulling up at gas station pumps, pumping their gas, and then going inside, leaving their car at the pump mm-hmm. is the most annoying bit. Yeah. Like if you can time it that you start putting the gas in and then you go inside and get something and come you out. You go by the inside time. while it's pumping. That's no, insanity. I don't. I don't I would, do that. Oh, well, okay. But sometimes I've seen people time that out, and you're. It's kind of impressive. It's impressive, but, but it's like, scary. So scary. Yeah. yeah. Like, what if your like pressure gauge doesn't yeah. work and it overflows? Yeah. No, look, I I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. I'm I know, just kind saying. Of sounds like you're pro go inside while the gas I have is pumping. N- I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you pro pump while your car is still on and running? Uh, yeah, no, I, don't, I, I don't have. A I turn off. I mean, I turn I don't my have car a, off, but but you know those people who do that. Yeah. Who yeah. like they pull up and they never shut their car yeah. off. They just pump while it's running. Yeah. My dad's one of those people. Yeah. When I worked in car sales, we did that because I don't know why we did it. Just I saw a bunch of other salesmen doing it, and I was like, well, this is just what people do. There's so not really any danger necessarily in it, but, you know, it's just what we do. But you're eating while you're feeding. Yeah. Like, right? Like, like you're, you're, you're using gas while you're filling gas. Why don't you just, like, stop using the gas, fill up, and then start it? Like, you get a better yield that way. You do, but the, I mean, the amount of gas you burn in two minutes at a, a gas station is But five is years of doing that. Let's really oh, crunch sure, yeah. the numbers <laughs> here. After five years of doing it, you're probably you wasting like a whole two ga- more gallons. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you bought two more gallons and you actually need it. Yeah. But dollar cost average, it's, yeah. it's got to be like what? Two dollars. Over, over inflation, you know, yeah. the gas. And what you, is going on? <laughs> um, what is happening? Right. I do think this is all relevant because this movie um, is filmed in the year 2000, 2000. and early 2001. Yeah. Um, this movie is set in the very, very small Halcyon period. Between the new millennia and 9-11 happening. Um, when did it come out? It comes out two weeks after 9-11. We're going to okay. talk about it. We're going to talk about it at We're the end because it's that. very important to this movie's release. Got it. Um, that that aspect. 
Um, but this movie is just like, it's so indicative of that like year and a half of just like, yeah, man, this movie could be about fashion shows. Why not? The world did not end with yeah, Y2K. The world didn't end with Y2K. America's on top. Um, we don't really have any concerns. It's the end of history, man. And we're just, you know, we're just cooking along. Everything's freewheeling. This, like this movie, like the biggest concern of this movie or the biggest concerns are like a textile company in Malaysia and like a fashion show going well. Th- this movie couldn't exist in any other time period than the specific year and a half that it came out, that it was filmed and released. Was it Rambo three? That's like dedicated to all the freedom fighters in Afghanistan yes. or whatever. Okay. Yes. I'm just, yeah. I, I've thought about that for some reason. Watching <laughs> Rambo three after we invaded Afghanistan <laughs> is just a kind of a wild guy. <laughs> As it becomes a very anti-American movie very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that was, that was, a, that was a good one. Yeah, Rambo 3, Rambo the Bizarre One were the first one he doesn't kill a single person. And by Rambo 3, he just... (laughs) At Um, one point, yeah, isn't it in Rambo 2, he's on the back... Or Rambo 4, he's on the back of that that truck (laughs) with the big machine gun, and he's just killing anything that has legs. Yes. (laughs) Um, Speaking of a mass murderer, back to Zoolander. (laughs) Um, But I I do think that when you're pondering this movie, it's... It's fun, like, I shouldn't say fun, but it is interesting to think about it as, like, kind of a peak bit of pop culture of that time period. Yeah. Like, this movie couldn't really exist after 9-11 in the sense that it almost, it actually doesn't, because it, it, it we will talk about it, it kind of flops because of 9-11. Yeah. Um, and it really couldn't, have, like, I don't know if it would have existed prior to that. It's just so specific of this period where there really isn't much of concern in the real world. Um, there's not really anything for this movie to satirize besides just like, you know, an an industry we already think is vapid. Yeah. An industry we already think is vapid and just like kind of just, you know, the most milk toast industry out there. Like ultimately who really cares about like the fashion world that, that this is the level where we're at with parody. Whereas like, you know, two years down the line, we're getting comedy movies, um, like, you know, the work of Adam McKay. Um, Anchorman through the other guys and Anchorman 2, which is so specifically like a post 9-11 reckoning with like machismo and the Bush administration and whatnot. Um, and this movie just isn't interested in that stuff. It's interested in being funny. Yeah. Um, speaking of, uh, they're hitting each other with gas pumps. Yeah. And one of them lights a cigarette and it explodes and kills them all. Yeah. And the gas station explodes in the middle of New York. And yeah. an insane explosion that yeah. is then not talked about for the rest of the movie. Yeah. We never, it's one of the great scenes in American film, um, is the gas pump fight ending with the explosion. Yeah. Um, I'm a huge fan of that. I made my wife watch it. I was like, come out here and watch the great it's scene. It's so good. And it's so, it happens so much fast. Every time I watch the movie, mm-hmm. I'm like, this happens so much faster yeah. than I remember it happening. It happens so much earlier. Yeah. It happens, like, the scene is over. I mean, the whole jitterbug scene is, like, maybe two and a half minutes yes. long. Like, it's quick. Between them getting in the car, driving to the gas station, dousing each other in gasoline, and subsequently blowing up. <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden, we're at the funeral. <laughs> yeah, like, just, yeah. There's, there's no gap. It's a hard cut to the gravestones. We're at the funeral where he's announcing his retirement. From yeah. the fashion model industry that he wants yeah. to go back to his hometown in West Virginia, West I believe. Virginia. Well, so no, they don't mining. Really it is place. southern New Jersey. Is it? No. It is explicitly southern New Jersey. There's no fucking mines no, in southern I know, but in the world of the movie, it is explicitly southern New Jersey. That's amazing. Because the, the joke um is that like he never leaves like the New York metropolitan area. Oh, and so, like, him going to southern New Jersey is, like, his perception of a coal mining town. Yeah, he's, like, two hours away. Yeah. yeah. In, in Zoolander 2, it opens with, uh, like, a shot of a mountain range with, like, a little cabin at the top, and it says northern New Jersey. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, that's I a, do not remember It's a pretty good funny. job. <laughs> um, but I, I want to say during his, he gives his little eulogy, and he's like, they were like my googly. Bro- he's like, you, they, were, they were like my brothers. Um and the and line, the line I wanted to quote was, I mean, brother, in the way black people use it, which is more meaningful, I think. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> like it's actual, it is a really good line. Yeah. Um, and then Hansel shows up 
with like his posse behind him. I love that basically anytime Hansel enters a room, it just Hansel. There's like a guy <laughs> holding a boombox playing his main theme music as he walks in. He always has his fucking scooter that he like, yeah. like puts that he like sheaths. Sheaths. <laughs> He folds up and sheaths yeah. like it's a sci-fi sword. Yeah. <laughs> Mugatu Hansel so hot right now. In the at the funeral. Yes, at the funeral. The funeral is also where Mugatu and Mori come up with their plan, right? Mm-hmm. I think so, yeah. Because Maury, uh, played by Jerry Stiller, um, Ben Stiller's dad. Um, originally, Ben Stiller was going to play both Maury and Zoolander. I'm so glad he didn't. Oh, Jerry Stiller man. is a treasure. And it was like a month before production. They're just like, Ben, you're kind of doing too much on this movie already. What if you just have your dad play Maury? Which makes like, more sense. Yeah, it's perfect. It's yeah. so good. Um, and so Jerry Stiller you know, and Mugatu concoct that. Ben or that Zoolander will be their their mentoring candidate uh, to assassinate the Mil- Malaysian prime minister. Yeah. Um, is there a fight at the funeral? No, but I don't um, think so. Ben Stiller keeps trying to announce his retirement. And, and everyone's gawking. Everyone's out. talking about Hansel. Yeah. He finally announces it and everyone goes crazy. And then he, he I mean, he gets into a verbal altercation with um, the reporter. Yes. And when he claims that she, he gets mad at her because she's too, she thinks he's too stupid to know what a Ugoogly yeah. is. <laughs> and then she doesn't know what a Ugoogly is. And he has to define the word, <laughs> further tripling down <laughs> on this mispronunciation, <laughs> really setting the snow for how dumb this fucking guy yeah. is. Yeah. The perfect dumb candidate for the plan. Yeah. Um, then we cut to... We don't go... We, yeah. she, New Jersey we go yet. to the, no, the, the, the newspaper room Yeah, where right. she's working and the, that that weird guy who seems like too handsome to yeah. not be a plant. Yeah. Like he's like the whole movie, I feel like you're like this guy's up to something, yeah. right? Like why does he keep coming in here? But he's really just actually helpful. Yeah, he just, and he like just keeps giving her information. A newspaper intern who keeps giving Christine Taylor um, information. And isn't then what this is when she asks about Mugatu, right? And yeah. he's like, we have no records before 1995. Like we don't know who this guy is. Yeah, yeah. Um, Christine Taylor is playing Matilda, the um, the reporter. Can I call you Matils? <laughs> Matil. But uh, we next go to like um, uh, Maury, Jerry Stiller's office, um, where Zoolander's telling him that he's going to retire. Yeah. And Maury's like, no, uh, um, Mugatu's got this big line for you. It's this new show called Derelict. Yeah. Oh, and he's, he's like, like, Mugatu has never worked with yeah, me Yeah, Mugatu's before. never worked with me before. Why would he want to hire me I need. I need to go connect with my roots. Yeah. Um, where are his roots? Yeah. Well, well, there's, there's, I do want to say Jerry Stiller's like basically just being a sex pest to all of his like female interns in the office. Yes. And what is, does he say? It's a tushy squeeze. And he yeah, he says tushy squeeze and he just grabs yeah. omens. Uh, but I do want to say wild to cast your dad as a sex pest in the movie. <laughs> like sometimes I can't tell if the st- he just comes up with this stuff himself. You yeah. Know? Like wild just be, because there's multiple more instances of him committing mm-hmm. sexual harassment in the office. And it is just funny to be like, you know who I'm going to have to do this? My dad. I'm going to have my dad do I that. I like to think that maybe Jerry Stiller just like did that on set, unscripted. Yeah, and it was just, and Ben Stiller like didn't say anything, but just like deep down like, what the fuck you do? That? Yeah. I don't know if we're making that kind of movie. Toshi squeeze. <laughs> I also have a like, question about Jerry Stiller's chest hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Is that real or prosthetic? There's so much hair. I think I think it's a real. That's, that's real. what that's what that's what my girlfriend said as well. But it was just I mean it's it only has one button unbuttoned. Yeah. Like it's it's like it's like pouring like, out. And it's just it's just gushing <laughs> yeah. out of the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's like trying to tame the forest. <laughs> you can't you simply cannot. Yeah. But he says he has to get in touch with the roots and we cut to like an overhead shot of what I'm pretty sure is West Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it says coal mining country and then below it, Southern, Southern New, New Jersey. Jersey. <laughs> okay. I missed that part. And we're just at like a cave going into a mountain and there's a bunch of coal miners. And Derek Zoolander in. comes up wearing his like fucking like out- coordinated yeah. all white outfit with, with his suitcases and out comes John Voigt. Yeah. John fucking Voigt. <laughs> and 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 lest we forget Vince Vaughn. Vin, a very, very young Vince does Vaughn. Does Vince Vaughn say a line? No. I don't think he says anything, does he? No, he just pats the other brother on the shoulder yeah. at one point. <laughs> this scrappy Zoolander played by Judah Friedlander. And um, of, of course, like when he shows up, they're all about to go into the mountain. Yeah. Like he doesn't 
I mean, I, New York is two hours away from southern New Jersey. Like, he could have shown up at any time. Yeah. And he doesn't go to the house. He just meets them there, <laughs> the like, cave. directly in front of the coal mine. Yeah. I mean, obviously, that saved us a lot of time in the movie. Yeah. I didn't need to go to John Voight's house. <laughs> yeah. But just the... the you, just, never, you never do. The leap, right? <laughs> <laughs> and his blue, his white outfit and his yeah. blue coveralls, and they all have the same hair. Yeah, they all have the Zoolander. <laughs> that was Zoolander a great hair. bit, especially yeah. when we're at the bar and we see them all take a drink, and I'm just like, they're all of the same hair. The, the not Vince Vaughn brother had the best, I think. Yes, like the closest to being because like of how much it didn't hair. match yeah. his body. Yes. <laughs> There's a quote from Voight in this uh, oral history that I remember. He's like, "Yeah, Ben, tell me he just wanted me to play this dead serious." Yeah, dude, and it, yeah. it's like John Voight's working. treating this like yeah. this is a real movie he's in. Yeah, um, and John Voight is a guy who can like phone it in, but I like that he's like just playing like a very disappointed like dad in this. Yeah, he's just like, "Why are you here? We don't want to see you." And Zuna's just like, "I want to work. I want to connect with you." Uh, so he gets involved in the coal mining operation. Um, they go into the mountain, and there's just like a montage of them like hitting coal with pickaxes and this is where we get like the another like sequence of memes that come yeah. from the scene with like Derek zoolander with his like tank on and just yeah. like strutting through with his pickaxe and well everyone else has got a jackhammer right and they're yes. running it into the walls to get these huge stones out and ben stiller has no concept of coal mining so he's actually using a pickaxe yeah. like it's 1864 <laughs> still yeah and like just no one says anything because no one wants him yeah. there and it's just this beautiful montage of him you know, and it culminates in him throwing the world's smallest piece of coal into the bin. <laughs> Using the As most effort the he most possibly effort. can. My favorite is he's like hoisting it up the side and he's like grunting. And then he gets to the top and with one hand, he he lets go of it. And then with one hand, just like carries it well past the distance <laughs> that he was lifting it and just drops it in. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> you love um, just how incompetent he is during yeah. the sequence. And um, God, what did I just think of? I had something I was going to say. I think we're at the bar. Yeah, we, we're at the bar. Yeah. At the after work bar where all the coal miners go. And um, he's sipping on like some kind of like martini or cocktail yeah. while they're all drinking beer. Yeah. Knocking and, them back. And I think they're showing something on the news about Derek Zoolander. I think. Yeah. Because that's when like they're his, showing the VH1 clip. Yeah. And his dad is just kind of looking at him like, you fucking idiot. And Why'd we, you do the sun? We get my favorite part in the whole movie where he coughs. Oh, like oh yes. He's so small. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got the, the black, black lung. lung. <laughs> <laughs> I know that that was more like a, a salad fingers impersonation <laughs> than a Zoolander impersonation, but I, good, I'm though. okay with the balance. I like, what you're, I like what you're cooking with. It was pretty good. Um, yeah. That's how it plays in my head. Yeah. Um, like, son, you'd be down there for 30 years and then you talk to me about black lung. <laughs> And then he gets a call. Oh, yeah. a call on his, is it, did he get the call on the tiny phone before the mermaid commercial or after? Oh, I can't remember the mermaid exactly. commercial. I forgot about that I one. I think it's simultaneous. Okay. Like, I think he's on the phone while the mermaid commercial is playing. On this tiny, tiny yeah. cell phone. Very it's small. It's like really small, like two inch tall cell phone. And he has to flip it up with yeah. his little finger. Um, And he's like, hello. And it's more being like, you got to hear the, the offer that the Mugatu's got for you. You got to come back. And he, um, he's just like, okay. And then while he, he's like not fully sold on coming back yet, but then John Voight basically disowns him after this yeah. commercial. He thought, well, he does disown yeah. him. He tells him you're not my son. Yeah. 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 Why'd you have to go and do this? Because on the TV, it's like this commercial of him doing blue steel as he swims through the water. He's like, moisture is the essence it's of wet. wet. And wetness is the essence it's of moisture. No, it's or something. He says something like hotness or something. I don't, I don't uh, yeah, I don't remember. But he's doing this like dramatic swimming thing. Yeah. And he's not moving anywhere near as fast or hard as he's yeah. swimming. And it's just like re obviously really bad CGI. Yeah. And he's like so moved by it. And John Voice is like, you're not my son anymore. Go fuck yourself. Go back to New York. And then the the un the brother whose actor name I don't know starts crying. And yeah. that's when Vince Vaughn comes behind him and puts a hand on his yeah. shoulder. Yeah. It's a beautiful sequence. Um. <laughs> You know, family bonds, family ties. Stuart, this is a movie you'd like. This is about families. Um, yeah, it hits all the core core yeah. markers for me. But um, he's back in New York um, because reconnecting with his roots didn't quite work out. Um, it's been one day. It's been one day. <laughs> he's back in New York. And what it 
this is just kind of becomes like bits. Yeah. He like agrees to work with Mugatu. Um, he gets brought to the spa. Yes. And well, this is where we get like the, and if you do this, like we'll make a library. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, oh yeah. This is the Derek Zoolander center for children who to can't re- re- who, who can't, can't read, read good. good and want to learn to do other things. Good too. <laughs> Don't you think there's something more to life than being really, 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 really ridiculously good looking? <laughs> and then it's, it's of course, it's a school with a book for a roof, <laughs> like an architectural nightmare, yeah. which we'll later learn in Zoolander 2 was yeah, the collapsed. undoing of the school. <laughs> yeah, It <laughs> collapsed and killed his wife in Zoolander Oh my 2. God, <laughs> that's fucking hilarious. But he throws the thing off the pedestal and it's yeah. like... What is this? A school for ants? <laughs> what is this? The second best line ants. in that movie, yeah. I think. This needs to be at least three times as big. <laughs> and Mugatu, you can see him sort of trying to reconcile what's going on because <laughs> yeah. he knows this guy's a fucking idiot. Yeah. But he doesn't think he's that dumb. And then he sa- yells a line about being three times this size. And yeah. Mugatu has to pivot live <laughs> and be like, you know what? You're absolutely We should right. make it three we times. We should make it bigger. Like, why would you do this? Appealing to Derek Zoolander's yeah. need for uh, need for uh, attention. Yeah. So yeah, then I think the next thing I remember he's he goes to the spa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He goes to the spa where he gets brainwashed. Well, and Christine T- Christina Taylor comes in at some point. She's getting phone calls she from a mysterious a t- figure. Yeah. Yes. And we see his hand in the glass. Yeah, in a case, glass box. Uh, in a glass box, we see him. We that's all we see while he's like on the phone. While she, while he's talking to her, telling her you got to yeah. go to this location, you got like, go to go to this like, warehouse location. Yeah, he's like, "Who is this?" Goodbye. Yeah, uh, but she goes and she finds Derek Zoolander there. Who's well? First, he gets brainwashed. Well, uh, I, I don't not think so. yet. He I doesn't think, go oh, to that room. He's yet. just getting a massage. massage. Okay, yeah, just so gonna... he flips over to talk to her, and this is when we get. This is when we learn that Derek Zoolander yeah. is hung like a horse. Yeah, he's getting a, ma- a massage from and Andy. It Dick. Moves like a compass. That's Andy Dick. That's Andy Dick in um, six hours worth of prosthetics Jesus. to be Olga, the uh, the masseuse. Uh, apparently, Stiller wanted Andy Dick to play Mugatu, but he was unavailable because of some show he was on. And Ben Starr's like, "Quit the show, come work on Zoolander." And he looks like, I'm not quitting the show. Probably but ben, smart. But Ben Seller's like, all right, well, do you want to do a day? And then Dick's like, yeah, I'll do a day. Just, you know, a little bit of work. And he sh- and Ben Seller concocted that he would require six hours of makeup to play I mean, Ogo the masseuse. And Andy Dick's like, I was punished because I told him I couldn't play Mugatu. In that's this movie. hilarious. I, I mean, had to show up at like 3 a.m. to start putting these, these prosthetics on to have a scene where I basically just fight a dick. Yeah, literally, he's got the duster, and the yeah. dick just keeps moving. And when yeah. I was 12, man, that was the funniest scene I had ever seen in my life. <laughs> the dick battle. Good. Yeah. Because he is, like, just getting a massage, and then his, like, his massive schlong <laughs> just sticks up through the curtain, and the nev- dick's, like, we, trying to sword fight it. We will never see as funny of a, a personification of a dick until 2016 Swiss Army Man with Daniel Radcliffe's moving dick. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about. I actually <laughs> haven't seen that You movie. haven't seen that no. movie? Have either of you guys seen Bo is Afraid? Yes. No. I, 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 that who has... here wishes they hadn't seen Bo is Afraid? <laughs> um, Stuart, do you mind a slight spoiler for Bo is Afraid? Go right, go right ahead. There's a... At one point, Joaquin Phoenix goes to meet his father... And he goes into the attic where his father is being held, oh, and it is a like yeah. twelve foot tall, massive uh, animatronic dick. It's a huge dick with a mat with a face that's going and it's roaring, and then and it it's eats, in the shadows, and it eats a Russian bounty hunter alive. Um, wow. Okay. Bo's Afraid is a movie where if you took an hour out at any random interval in that movie, you could take any you know you could take three scenes here, three scenes there. It doesn't matter, and the movie would still end up exactly the same. So okay. This is his father in Bo is Afraid. And it is an animatronic creation. It's not CGI. Oh my God. It's got like tentacle arms. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this is probably the second uh, most frightening rendition of a dick besides Bo is Afraid. Yeah. Is a Derek Zoolander. Derek Zoolander. Yeah, it seems to be moving of its own volition while yeah. Andy Dick is trying to swat at it with a, uh, like a dust. Yeah. And well, every time he goes to hit it, it moves in some direction that is de- defies the physics of dicks. <laughs> and this goes on for like several seconds. Yeah, this is substantial. Christine Taylor is explaining the conspiracy while this is happening. While, while this, is, this happening. is happening. And you're like, you cannot focus on her because you're like, what am I, what is happening at this moment in time? 
Um, but then uh, she gets ushered out by Olga or not Olga the the Mila Jovovich Mila Jovovich Katinka Inga Bogovina Vina. Yeah, <laughs> that was Katinka. really good. <laughs> I'm surprised you were able to knock that one out. <laughs> um, been practicing. Yeah, I've been practicing that. In the second one, she has a longer name. Nice. It's is, like, it, is it the same name, but just with more yes. letters on the end? Sorry. It's In- Inga Bogovina Anna 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 or something like that. But she, she, yeah, yeah, she throws her out. Yeah. And then after that, it's we bring, we bring Zoolander to the brainwash scene. Yeah. And that's also when we learn, we see that other, that other great scene when they're telling him that male models will do whatever they're told. Yeah. And, oh, no, that's later in the movie. That's when he's talking yeah. to, uh, to, to He's getting this, uh, this um, essentially like video montage of Mugatu in various outfits, just being like, you're going to kill the prime minister of Malaysia. Um, and he learns somehow through this brainwashing technique, he learns all sorts of martial arts. And yes. he tells him, like, you're going to learn karate. Yeah. And he becomes an expert at, at various different And arts. they say, like, the code word will be, you'll hear, relax, just do it, the mm-hmm. song. And that'll be when you'll kill the prime minister. The plan is so strange. Because, like, essentially, they're going to put on this fashion show, invite the prime minister. Then when Derek Zoolander gets on the runway... They're going to play the song, relax, and then he's going to like snap into like Manchurian candidate mode and karate chop him to death? Yes. Uh, well, well, he's going to twist his neck. He's going to twist his he's neck. He's going to break his neck off, yeah. Right. But he works for Mugatu. Yes. So like Mugatu isn't like totally off the hook with this plan. Well, but they think it's going to be... And this is what this is what they kind of plan on. And he actually says this explicitly at one point that like, like I didn't do anything. Derek Zoolander is just crazy because he yeah. can't take the he couldn't take losing, so he yeah. freaked out at the fashion show. And he it just happened. He killed yeah. the prime minister as like a fluke. Yeah. But so they they that's they the think, scheme they're gonna go with. And because they have this like clandestine warehouse that nobody was supposed to know about, they think that they can get away with brainwashing him, and no one will know. And they, and they almost they kind of succeed because he he comes out a week later. Yeah, he wakes up in his apartment. Yeah, and Belie- what, believing it to have been the same day. Like I just yes. got a massage. That was yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But Christina Taylor's like, no, no, no. You like I haven't no, seen you for like a week. She, I think she runs into him at the um, at the club, right? No, I think this is no. She later. comes to his apartment. She's oh, does like she pounding on his door? And he's like, "What are you freaking out about? Like I've been gone for like four hours." Yeah, I just saw yeah. you earlier this yeah. morning or this She's afternoon. Like, that was a week ago, Derek. And he's like, no. Ooh. And so then she makes an impassioned plea and she's like, look, this is what's happening. Meanwhile, the intern, the, the, the um, newspaper intern has been feeding her more and more information. They've, we've now discovered that Mugatu was the inventor of the piano, yes. piano <laughs> key necktie. necktie. <laughs> um, under the name Jacob Moogberg. Under the name Jacob Moogberg. Which I, I just, Will Ferrell's outfit for the Jacob Moogberg. Oh, it's so good. It's it's the quint. It's I think of as like the quintessential Will Ferrell look. Yeah. Like this is just like perfect. What you envision Will Ferrell's comedy as is is like that. The little fake mustache, yep. whether it's Ron Burgundy or some guy he's playing on SNL, and like the tall hair. That's just what with I envision. With the synth guitar too. With the synth guitar. Yeah. The keytar. But so she she makes that in that plea to Derek and he's like we got she's, we got to go somewhere no one will think to find you until the fashion show blows over. Yeah. Cuz she's like I'm pretty sure you're going to kill the prime, the prime minister. minister. She like she knows she knows exactly what's going to happen. And this is how and then they start that what are they doing? They're driving around. Yeah. And he sees a Hansel ad and he freaks out. Yeah. And she's like oh genius. Yeah. We're going to go to Hansel. Well the, the they go to Hansel this that's a little later because first we do get the two um, we get the club scene and we get the um, the D- David Duchovny scene. Oh yeah yeah, yeah. The David because he kind of blows scene. her off when she comes to his apartment. That's true. And then she runs into him again later because he goes to the club um, that night. Um, that's we, when we, we get, get a wide shot of the club and then it just cuts to Winona's, Winona's face. Winona oh yes yes, yes yes. How could I forget? That's what we're here for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Winona's face and she's like. I just think she's doing like her. She has her like full Minnesota accent on. She's like, I just think you're real courageous, you're real brave. You're a hot guy. She talks about <laughs> how how well he handled himself yeah. after the the, the embarrassment on so VH1. Well, you're so courageous. Bigger, bigger. 
<laughs> but I just love that we go like, like we cut from this conversation, and I know we said this before, but it just cuts right to Winona Ryder's yeah. face. Like she's just in this movie now. Yeah, there's no like establishing shot. She's just already talking. Yeah, they're already at the club. It's already happening. Presumably, they've been talking for a while. And I think it. He like gets up to to like go get her a drink. Like they're gonna have like a decent date night. I'm looking at pictures of her in this movie right now. Um, it, it really is just like she is the whole frame. Um, like. She, oh wait. She, new development. New development. There are deleted scenes with Winona for this movie. No. God damn it. No way. I'm pulling them up as we speak. It's not about competition. I'm better than Derek. And I'm, you know, the best model. Oh, shit. They had filmed the exact same scene, but with Owen Wilson in the thing with her. Now I'm a little bit mad I didn't watch that before coming. Yeah, word shows are bogus. It's not about competition. That I'm better than Derek. And I'm, you know, the best model ever. It's not, I mean, you know, poor Derek. I mean, for all I know, he genuinely misheard the announcement. Maybe dude's ears are lucked up. He can't pick up sound the way I can. In which case, this was sort of a gift to him. God's always trying to talk to us. <laughs> if you're tuned into the right station, you can hear him. My God. Hmm. I mean, watching you up there, you have such a presence. Really? I appreciate that coming from you because I think that you have an eye for talent and the way that you've selected material over the years. Is, this staggers me. You know, I love aliens. You know, when I find out that you're a droid and that, it's like, <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, I'm not mad that was cut. I kind of am. At least the first bit. So I liked the first the bit. The first bit was like funny. Do you know what that part? was? Honestly, maybe the first bit, not so much the second bit. The The first bit to me felt like it's like, like they already had Owen Wilson there on set. Yeah. In mm-hmm. his makeup wardrobe waiting for his next scene. And they had like probably the Derek Zoolander Winona Ryder scene already scripted and ready to go. And... Ben Stiller, I can only imagine, just like, let's just do something with Winona and Owen. Let's just see. Let's yeah. just see what happens. And then they just put Owen Wilson in there, and they just like rolled on an unscripted take or whatever. And that's I, what they got. I do love how Owen Wilson manages to say so much, yet so little yeah. throughout this entire movie. Yeah. Because the, the, the way the scene plays out in the movie is like, he and Winona are at the club, and he like goes to get her a drink. And then runs into Hansel. Yeah. Um, and they have their like dance off, right? Or their their well, walk off. That's where the he off. runs into him and he's just like, Excuse me, brah. And and I think he says so it's like, You're excused. And I'm not your bra. Yeah. <laughs> and classic. Because it, it does lead right into the walk off, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out where that Winona thing fits into this movie. Because like so I I I think in this in this the Winona Ryder Ben Stiller scene isn't in the movie. It's replaced yeah. with that. I yes. don't think that they go together. It's replaced that, but there's that part where like at the end of that Stiller comes up, finds Winona and um, Owen Wilson mm-hmm. together, and then gets thrown out of the club. And Winona's yeah. like, "Hey, come home with me, Owen Wilson." 
Yeah. So where does the dance off? Yeah. Fit where does in the that? where does the walk off fit? Right. Exactly. That? Yeah. Um. So well, I I mean I it makes a, how the movie ultimately ends up is perfect for what it wants to do. Yeah. Um, which is that Winona does not make an appearance again after he goes to get her a drink. Yeah. Yeah. Just gone. Um, completely cut. It is fun to know that they had multiple variations of it. Yeah. Like to me, it just like they pro- did. They did, they did her with both of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, we, we, well, while we have yeah. Winona and both are cast here. And like, he's just like, I think you're a droid. I liked learning that. That was weird. I didn't like the second bit where it's <laughs> like, man, when you were in Aliens, I was like, yeah. And and she has that look of like, oh, God. Yeah, finding out you were a droid was pretty crazy. Yeah. I mean, we covered that movie. You know, it was pretty crazy. And we we're like, oh, shit, she's a robot. She's a robot. You had said to me you were surprised I chose Zoolander over Alien Resurrections. Yeah. I've never seen Alien Resurrections. Oh, man, I should have made you do Alien yeah. Resurrections. You should have done Alien Resurrections. That would have been a wild one. I've only actually seen the new Alien movies. You're like Prometheus and Covenant? And Covenant, yeah. That's pretty wild. I tried to watch, and I know I need to give it a second try. I tried to watch the first Aliens, and my beef with it is not really a fair beef because it came out in the 80s. And it's my same beef with Blade Runner. Like... I just really like how people in the late 90s, early 2000s figured out science fiction, right? Mm-hmm. Everything is flat and sleek, but everything before that is sci-fi is just clutter. Like everything is clutter and it's dirty. And well, I know that's you, the point. It. I know the, that's the point of Alien because it's a bunch of working class people yeah. on a ship. You are speaking to two people who 12 hours ago went to go see Alien in a movie theater. Yeah. And like, I, <laughs> we, we are coming hot off of just having watched Alien yesterday. I, I know I need to give it. It's fair shot. It is re-released in theaters this weekend. I uh, yeah. What are I, you doing after this recording? I suppose <laughs> you're going to see Alien. Well, like originally gonna I was going to see the Mummy, yeah. but you know. Well, we'll it sounds see. like you're going to go see Alien. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I was really upset I didn't see Spider Man Two in theaters the other <sighs> it night. So it was so good, iconic. It was so good. Yeah, but um, anyways, um, I, they have a walk off. They have a walk off, and we get yeah. David Bowie. Yeah, David Bowie's the announcer. They say who could possibly like. You know, judge officiate this. The, oh, judge yeah. this. Yeah. And of course, David Bowie emerges from nowhere. Yeah. And he's just like, I'll do it. And he like gets a freeze frame. Um, and, and a says, title card. Yeah. A title card where it's just like says David, David Bowie, Bowie and it plays um, like a clip from one of his songs. I think. I don't know. I'm trying Maybe. to think. What? What? Did, yeah. But essentially, like the rules of the game is like they each get to do their own like walk off style and they have to mimic it exactly. Yeah, it's like horse, but yeah, but with modeling. Yeah, walking down a runway. Oh, yeah. And of course, there's a space set up for this. Right. Yeah. Of course. Like everybody knows what the classic like yeah. walk walkway. I remember is. it's he, he probably says, "I'll do it," and then it free turns and goes, "Let's dance." It does that close. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so then they start to the walk off, and like I love how it's like they're parroting off of like a Rocky Balboa boxing match. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Owen Wilson's like, you got to cut me. <laughs> I can't see you. Yeah, he <laughs> takes the scissors and he cuts his bangs lightly and then he starts screaming. He's yeah. like, ah! <laughs> he's, uh, he's spitting like nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like just spit into a bucket because yeah. it's not bloody. Yeah. Owen Wilson who's getting like really tired and Ben Stiller who's just like not really feeling that phased much. So, because they're doing like dance moves and things, and they're able to all mimic it exactly the same, pretty much. I gotta commend like the choreography was actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. If anything, not so much like the choreography choice, but how much they mimicked it because they played it side by side. Yes, and that's what I was was impressed with. I was like, how like coordinated they were about it. I was like, that's actually pretty good. Like, it's effective. We also get a cameo from um, uh, Fred Durst. Yes. Of Limp Biscuit. So that's cool too. Director yes. of um The Fanatic, a movie we talked about on this show. Amazing. Um oh we 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 just fucking skipped over the most important cameo in this movie. Billy Zane. Billy Zane. <laughs> Billy Zane. Zane. Comic, and Billy Zane is in Derek Zoolander's corner. Yeah, Billy Zane. And he's like willing to fight a guy for yeah. him. Yeah. I love that whole sequence where it's just like Billy Zane shows up and he's just standing behind Derek Zoolander the whole time as like his hype guy. As himself. And Owen yeah. Wilson has a posse, right? And, yes. And yeah. And Derek Zoolander does not. Derek Zoolander only has Billy Zane. Billy Zane. And he doesn't even he doesn't show up with Billy Zane. Billy Zane is there talking just to a woman. happens to be at the club. And yeah. is just like, wait, fuck it. And goes to support his just boy. back Ben his Stiller boy. up. Yeah. Uh, but then Owen Wilson is like, I got to pull out the last move. 
And so he gets up on the walkway, sticks his hand down his pants, and starts like doing a little chuck and jive a bit. And then eventually he yanks out his underwear and like tosses it at uh, Derek. And, and they're perfectly clean. They're unripped. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a miracle he got them off him without taking off his pants. With one hand. With one hand. With one hand. And then this one of the funniest lines in the entire movie. Because Derek goes up. And the first thing we hear is voiceover. It's like, good thing I wore underwear today. Because <laughs> <laughs> he just says it in the most like, <laughs> like Derek Zoolander way possible. Yeah. And it it's, was just, it's rare he wears underwear. Right. He's yeah. just lucky today was one of those <laughs> yeah. days. It was a lucky day he wore underwear. But um, he's not able to do it. He puts one hand down. He's chucking and jiving. Puts two hands down his mm-hmm. pants. And he like yanks up his underwear. He's like, ooh. <laughs> And that doesn't rip yeah. off. Um, I want to read the Billy Zane quote about how he gets in this movie. Yeah. I was living in Manhattan from 99 until a bit after 9-11, right next door to the Mercer Hotel. I was frequenting quite a few fashion shows and gallery openings and enjoying my Manhattan Minute. In the process, I kept running into Ben, who was doing research for a film at some Hugo Boss shows, among others. He asked me to show up this one sequence that had quite a few cameos in it of people playing themselves with a nod to self-parody. I said, of course, I'm there in a heartbeat. My scene was pretty much entirely improvised, and that's what was really so fun about it. Derek was challenging Hansel, and he had his whole crew behind him. And Ben said, Billy, why don't you back me up? (laughs) (laughs) I love that so much. Realizing he has no posse, be like, Billy, why don't you be my posse? Well, that's what's so good about it. He just, like, shows up. Yeah, and he's just standing there. And I said, I love it. I've got Derek's back. Sure, no problem. At which point, the dialogue between him and Owen just going into more and more bizarre places. Owen's line, listen to your friend Billy Zane. He's a cool dude. I don't remember it being scripted at all. That was just Owen creating this funny meme in the making. I thought it was humorous on the day, and I had no idea that it was going to evolve into something that people quote more than any other line from any movie I've been in. Fantastic. Uh, Then the writer of the movie, in the Zoolander world, Billy Zane is God. The, Listen the, to your friend Billy Zane. Yeah, he's, he's a cool, cool. Apparently, people just say yell that at Billy Zane now. Um, the opening of Zoolander 2 is like a 20 minute sequence of Billy Zane doing a Nick Fury recruiting people to join like uh, a fashion line. Um, Avengers. Avengers. Thing. It sucks. Like Billy Zane's funny in it, but the joy of this scene is just that you don't expect Billy Zane to be there as himself. And then he's just like the one hype guy. And Derek he, ca- and he has. delivers a couple of lines. Like yeah. I feel like most of the cameos. He's like are pulling just like, Derek aside and being yeah. like, buddy, you got to watch yourself like this. Could, this could not go right for you. And then he's in the corner during the fucking fight yeah. scene. Um, but it does not go well for Derek Zoolander. He embarrasses himself. And David Bowie is like, disqualify. He emerges yeah. between Derek Zoolander's legs to, to, yes. to yell. Yes. This. Yeah. Disqualified, isn't it? Um, so Derek Zoolander loses the walk off. Yes. He's a, uh, you know, embarrassed, destroyed. Yeah. And that's when Christine Taylor, Matilda kind of like connects with him again. Yeah. Um, and she's like, I need to go to the cemetery. She like, doesn't she like pull him out of the walk off? Yeah. Yeah. And, and gets him out of there. Yeah. Cause she, she gets another call from this guy. who's like, you need to go to the cemetery. I'll, I'll meet you there. And she brings Derek with her. I don't remember how she convinces him to come with her though. Yeah. I'm not quite, I'm not exactly sure, but she does come with him to the cemetery where she's been getting these calls. Having had just watched this movie two days ago, I can't believe I can't remember this. But I also forgot Billy Zane's cameo. This movie has a lot of business in it that just kind of like leaves your head and the jokes stay behind, which is like the success of a good horror movie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we're going to enter the most business scene of the movie. Right. Because they show up and what's this guy's name? David Duchovny. David Duchovny. Yeah. They're at the gravestone. He's playing J.P. Pruitt. Yeah. So they're at the gravestone that they're told to go to, and they're sort of talking about... But doesn't she apologize or something for... Oh, no, they're looking at the, the gravestones of the other models who yeah, have died. Yeah, male models interesting. who died. Male models. They never reached me. 30. Yeah. <laughs> Which was, like, for making him so dumb. Yeah. And he's able to do, like, pretty solid quick math on that. Yeah. yeah. He figures that out. Like, one's 1963 to 1992. And I was like, wait, what? And, and he just like, says, I ne- they never reached 30 so fast. And we yeah, were like, like, wow, he did that. He math. figured it out. Like, this Great. goes against the first hour of the movie. But OK, <laughs> we'll let it go. Because uh, David Duchovny emerges with like a glass case around his hand. 
He's like, my name is J.P. Pruitt. That's the most successful hand model in the industry. Yeah, and he's been preserving his hand. But he doesn't, doesn't, he doesn't say his name until Ben Stiller grabs his hand and he goes, I recognize yes, this yes. from like the 1970 Jimmy. Cartier catalog or whatever. And that's when he's like, yeah, I'm J.P. Pruitt, like most famous most hand model. It's like we hand models are smarter than our full face and body counterparts. That's what he says, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so because they try, they try to make him, they try to like Manchurian candidate David yeah. Duchovny, and he, he figures it out. And he like, what does he do? Does he stage his death and go into hiding? Yeah, like stage his death and went into hiding. Mm -hmm. And he implies that multiple of the most uh, famous assassinations in history were done by male models. Oh yeah, John Wilkes oh, Booth. Yeah. He says, he says an actor slash model. Yes. Um, JFK. Um, but wait, oh, wait, wait, my, wait, my wait, two models wait, wait, who are on we the grass. Can't, we can't leave John Wilkes Booth because there's that clip where, like, when it, you see like Abraham Lincoln, and they have like a cutaway where you yeah. see like the loft or whatever yeah. in the theater where it's Abraham Lincoln, and you see this figure emerge, and it does a like a crash zoom mm -hmm. into John Wilkes Booth and doing the blue steel yep. faces, <laughs> James Marston. Yep. <laughs> yep. I saw that, and I was watching this with my girlfriend. I'm like, I had to rewind it one second. Yeah. We rewind it, paused it, and I'm like, that's fucking James Marston. <laughs> it's John a very young James Marston. Very young James Marston, doing a holding a pistol and doing a blue steel like mm -hmm. <laughs> look. And the, the two male models on the grass. On the grassy <laughs> knoll. <laughs> on the grassy knoll for JFK. <laughs> I thought he was about to say, like, I'm the man who shot Reagan or yeah. some bullshit. I don't know. Well, I just love that they were like, you may be thinking, like, Lee Harvey Oswald, he wasn't a model. And you're like, but the two guys on the grassy <laughs> know were. And then it comes to them, and it's these two dudes popping up. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so good. Duchovny said that... Um, he was asked to do this movie, and he was given, like, a choice of multiple roles... Um, and he's like was so intrigued by playing this guy, especially coming off of the X Files, uh -huh. was what he'd been doing. Um, and he's like, I realized the straighter I could be, the funnier I could be. So I just committed to the reality. I figured I'm Gene Hackman, but in some other movie. <laughs> it's just because he like takes it so seriously. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I remember we ran the scene a lot. It was a real long walk and talk, and I had the bulk of the dialogue. It was very exposition heavy. And I remember after a number of takes, I fucked it up. And both Ben and Christine go, finally. I was coming from the X-Files world where you know that shit backwards and forwards. I was like, I'm not going to make a mistake. After like 20 takes, they were happy when I finally did. Because hmm. he's just so used to out of the X-Files. Yeah. Just like getting those scenes where it's like, this guy was available, worked in a UFO military base and this year from, to the, from this year to this year. And these FBI agents went at that time. and the, But then they moved to our, this place and just like rambling off exposition. Yeah. And so he's basically perfect to do this little scene. Yeah. Just re, like riffing all this stuff. And the scene would almost risk being too serious if it's not for how it ends. Yeah, but they get attacked by Katinka. Well, no, be, what, after he tells this whole story about the assassinations, um, off of Derek Zulina's initial question, why male oh, models? Yes. And he tells them the whole saga. It takes like three minutes to get through the story. And then Derek Zulina's just like, but why, why male, male models? models? <laughs> I love, too, there's like this little pause. And he's just like... Are you serious? I just told Man, you like that. I just explained it to you a <laughs> moment ago. That is apparently Derek Lunar had a scripted line and Ben Stiller forgot it and just was like, but why male models again? <laughs> and Duchovny was just riffing off of him like, are you fucking serious? Dude? It's, it's so good because I feel like in so many movies when that like something dumb like that gets brought up, no one ever acknowledges it because it's yeah. what we're all thinking. Yeah. Right? We're all like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. We just had to sit through this. You're going to make him explain it again. Yeah. And then he's like, but why male models? And he's like, well, I just explained it to you. And then Ben Stiller just goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then all of a sudden he just remembers. Like, he's like, oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, he says, like, well, mo male models are in better phys like physique. They're in peak physical condition. condition. And um, they're very easily manipulated. And then it cuts to, like, Derek Zoolander playing, like, a monkey in, like, yeah. a photo dance, shoot. Dance, monkey, dance. Pat Oswalt. Pat Oswalt. Pat Oswalt. Just screaming at With him. With a terrifying beard. Just yelling yeah. at him while he claps these symbols <laughs> and, and chimps like, chirps like a monkey. And, and, and then it cuts back to the favorite server. They're like, good point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they get attacked by Katinka and some goons. Yeah. They shoot David Kovney, who doesn't seemingly die. He, well, yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, he's not dead, but like he's like, you guys got to get out of here. 
He's like, thank you for helping us. And then he stamps on it. He steps on his hand. He stomps on the hand. <laughs> it's like, no. God, God. <laughs> the hand that's been hermetically sealed for yeah. like 20, 30 years. <laughs> yeah. And then they run away. And then yeah. they're like, where can you hide that they'll least expect you to be? And then that's when they think of. And he's like racking his brain. Mm-hmm. And then he sees the ad for Hansel again he's and like, yells his guy. name like, I hate that guy. And she's like, oh, that's genius. Mm-hmm. And so they go to Hansel's pad. Yeah. Who's pretty quick to be convinced. Yeah. He's like, yeah, are you guys can crash here. Yeah. <laughs> we does- just got to air some laundry or clean out the laundry. <laughs> and then they like cry on each other's shoulders, yeah. basically, in this really weird 45 second scene. Yeah, and no one else is just like, I was, I've been a huge fan of you, man. You're the reason I got into this. Which that all has confused me for years because like the life of a male model, Fabio excluded, like it really doesn't seem like it's that long. Yeah. And so like, what are we saying here? That Hansel is like 15 years younger than Derek Zoolander. Like how long has Derek Zoolander I been honestly, around? I think the implication is just that like, because it is such a short time frame. The like Owen Wilson was inspired by him like three months ago. Okay, see that I, I can live yeah. with that headcanon. Owen Wilson, who would then later on go and play a role as like somebody in like a competitive field, who then gets outdated and has to then yeah, uh, cars. learn to yeah <laughs> cars. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank wow. you. Wow, wow, oh, good job. Cars is good. Yeah. Um, but then uh, we go in, and yeah. apparently male models are fucking rich. Yeah, because Hansel has just a litany of people. Inside I am obsessed this warehouse. with Hansel's posse because it's not just like a bunch of like dudes. It's like various like um, shamans, Aboriginal <laughs> cultures, yes. and shamans from around the world, and little people. Yeah, he has some Finnish little people. Um, They're Finnish wrestlers, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, there's some like Maori tribesmen. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a shaman. There's a Sherpa from uh, Mount Everest. Yeah, yeah, his his Sherpa. <laughs> he calls him his Sherpa, but then we never learn if he actually went up Mount Everest yeah. or not. <laughs> I mean, just, he, he didn't, but like he's just his Sherpa. He's just there. And then it's the, the, those two and Christina. Yeah, just talking, and some point they bring up sex. Yeah, because oh, I remember. So Owen Wilson asks. Christine, it's like, so Matilda, can I call you Matilda? What do you think of models? And she's like, I think models are the most like selfish, self-centered, dumb, egotistical. And he's like, oh, well, what do you think of male models? <laughs> <laughs> and Ben still, they start hyping each other up. He's yeah. like, oh, that was a good one. They're boys. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, she, she like mentioned, she mentions that she had like body issues when she was younger because she said it had a bulimia. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, oh, well, it's like, what's bulimia? And she's like, it's when you like throw up after every meal. It's like, oh, yeah, I do that all the time. Well, yeah. Hansel and Hansel and, and Derek like lose their minds cackling with laughter. And yeah. she's like, I don't get it. It's like, this is like, a men- well, this is we an do illness. That after every meal. Yeah. And they, yeah. She, she tells them it's an illness and they don't believe her. Yeah. Because uh, they're like, she's like, yeah, I was a fat kid and I got made fun of and felt like models were like this unachievable standard that we were being held to. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> laugh, they laugh at her body issues. <laughs> they really laugh at her like body dysmorphia and stress that she's been put under. Yeah. And then they have an orgy. And then they have an orgy. Uh <laughs> We did skip over. There's the, is that one scene. I completely forgot when she goes to visit him at his apartment. Yeah. And it's the same like rom-con move that's in like every movie. Yeah. Oh, he's like, he's like, he's you could like, be so much prettier. And then he like, he like put, lets her hair down. He, yeah. he like does this crazy thing and like his hands are moving really fast. And then the camera cuts and all he's done is like take her ponytail yeah, out and let her and, hair like, down, put her hair next to her face. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Anyways, but then they have an orgy. Then they have an yes. orgy. Um, thirty minutes later in the movie, and the, like the the Sherma, the, the Sherpa is <laughs> Everybody's involved. Everybody's in. Everybody's um, in this some orgy. Some of the Finnish uh, wrestlers are involved. No, I, I I wrote down the quote because it is just like you see like um it's like a spinning shot just on everyone's face mm-hmm. in the orgy, and like it's Owen Wilson, it's Ben Stiller, it's uh, Christina Taylor. It like shows like this various like Finnish wrestlers and Sherpas like, well, like having big like O faces like oh well they ask her too like right before the orgy yeah she like complains that they like make a comment about sex and she's like well it's been a bit of a dry spell for me and they're like what's a dry spell like eight days yeah <laughs> like try like two years like two years. 
years. <laughs> How have you survived? And the, the the line after it is he's he like kind of confesses his feelings for her, and she's like, "Last night when you were sandwiched <laughs> between the two finished dwarves and the Maori tribes." <laughs> <laughs> I wrote <roasted. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Oh my when god. I saw you sandwiched that between the two finished dwarves and the Maori tribes. Story. <laughs> that, that fucking killed me. Just his delivery of it. It's like, yeah, yeah but she was sandwiched between the two Maori dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> the two finished dwarves and the Maori tribes. Man. And he delivers all of his lines so slow yeah. that you're just like kind of waiting for him to get to the end and then he just starts saying the most ridiculous stuff. Oh, so good. Um, <laughs> freshly in love and convinced they need to save the day, they come up with their plan. Um, yeah, that they need to like break into Mugatu's office. Maury's, Maury's office. And they need office. to get the file. The files are in the computer. And they need yeah. to get them out of the computer. Because they found out Maury's in on it all, yeah. all has been on it all along. Do, oh. do they don't they like overhear a phone call or something? I, how do they find out Maury's involved? I think like I think they just figure it out. I think they out. just like kind of say it. <laughs> is it just the intern again yeah, who delivers yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, I, like think, I, I truly think it is just like they're like, yeah, he must be involved because he got you the job or yeah. something like that. Or maybe they find, I, I think maybe the intern finds out that he's represent. he represented all of the models yes. who have died. Yes, that's, that's it. what that's it is. It. And that's when I'm like, yo, is this, who the fuck is this guy? Like he just <laughs> seems to know everything. He just keeps turning. He can't up. be a good person, right? And it just turns out he is. He's, he's just the guy. He's fine. He's just the guy who allows the plot of the movie to move forward. And without him, the movie doesn't do, happen. She has to do all of this work, and with him, we just get to skip all of that work. And he just tells her, "Yeah." It saves us substantial time within the content of the movie, which is perfect. It did not need to be any longer than an hour and twenty nine minutes. It's the perfect length for a movie of this type. Um, um, but yeah, so then they decide. To, so they're going to break in um, to uh, Maury's office and they're going to get the files out of the computer. And Ben Stiller is like, I have, you know, decades of makeup experience. Like, yeah. I know how we can get in without. Oh, my God. And yeah, <laughs> we cut immediately yeah. to two actors who are not Owen Wilson yeah. or Ben Stiller. Walking through the hallway, one acting is, like them. One is a black man, and one is a uh, Latino. Yeah, yeah. It's um, but like anytime they speak, they're overdubbed with uh, Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson. Ben I will say, I'm glad that this movie does it this way. Yeah, like it is funny that it is just like two actors who don't like anything like them playing someone else. It is better than Ben Stiller doing blackface in this movie. <laughs> it is. It, it was get like as soon as he pulled out like the makeup and it's like, oh, I know how to do make. I looked at Angelica and my girl and I was like, oh my god, no, 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 I forget, no. <laughs> I forget every time. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I mean, in the they, I mean, in the very next scene where they're taking the makeup off, like, e like even that's a little bad, a little bit. The, that that could not be done today, and it probably shouldn't have been done yeah. in two thousand and one. And it's a little, it's a little uncomfortable living in, in like, you know, what we know yeah. now and everything and, and, and this climate, like, it, cause it's all on his forehead and it's on yeah. his neck and it's on his hands. You can see it's like a little bit, yeah, like a little bit black out. face and you're like, okay, maybe the scene will end quickly. Yeah. And it does. And it does. <laughs> it just keeps going. And, and arguably it, it gets a little worse. Um, <laughs> um, but anyways, then, you know, they start. They, they yeah. don't know how to use a computer because yeah. of their models. That it's yeah. 2001. So they just, you know. Oh, the, he leaves Owen Wilson with the computer. Well, before that, they, they are like, they're gawking at this computer. Gawking turns into like the chimpanzee. Oh, yeah. Like, it starts playing the 2001 music. And oh, then oh, Owen oh. Wilson gets out the bone from Maury's desk. And he's like, we no. <laughs> so they're hitting it with the keyboard and they're they're drumming on it and they're reenacting that scene from 2001 a space odyssey and then of course and then the bone which was sh featured prominently in a shot in maury's office early on in the movie that i totally forgot about all of a sudden owen wilson has it in his hand and that's when they decide yeah don't don't break the computer we have to get them out and so then ben stiller has to leave yeah so this is what i was confused about. i was like oh my god i've never been late for a show i gotta go yeah but the whole, <laughs> pl but the whole plan was like you weren't gonna go that's what we've been doing <laughs> but he goes anyways and, you know, I mean, I suppose it's, you just have to gloss over it because it's the movie. Yeah. And Owen Wilson, he feels a phone call, right? And that's when someone's like, the files are in the computer. In the computer. And he's like, oh, I understand. In the They're computer. In the, the computer. computer. 
<laughs> and it's one of those great old classic IMAX. You know, it's it's like a yeah. neon orange on the top. And yeah, it's transparent. It's transparent. It's a you know very indicative of the times. Yeah. Um, but Ben Stiller then shows up and he's getting his hair and makeup done to derelict to derelict, which the is show. a show inspired by the, the homeless. homeless and crack. Um, the exact line is. I think it's like homeless in crackpots or something like that. Um, Don't you guys remember when Balenciaga did that weird garbage bag fashion show like a year oh, ago? Um, and how life so magically imitates art. Yeah. Because I think people were making comparisons off the Zoolander scene and that. Like they I, were showing the clip like side by side. Yeah. And that's what I, you know, I had been saying to you earlier too was like, that's what's so much fun about fashion is I feel like I know they're making fun of it, but it just feels so spot on to take the word derelict and make it sound French. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's fashion. Um, but, but yeah, yeah, he's in this like weird, like garbage bag get up and everything seems to be made from like really thick black garbage bags. Yeah. Everything's like scraps and all the other models that are going up first are all like wearing this like garbage stuff. We see the Malaysian prime minister sitting like front and center. Yes. Right at, at the, the end of the, of the red carpet. It's yeah. just or the, the uh, end of the runway. runway. It's just like this cute, like Asian man who's just like sitting there like, oh, <laughs> like Wood, Woodrow Asai. Is Woodrow guy. Asai. Uh, and so then finally it's, Ben Stiller's turn. And that's when like Christina finally understands like, oh my God, it's the song. Yeah. Relax. yeah they're going to the use trigger. relax. They're gonna, that's the trigger. And so she is, she like calls Owen Wilson. It's like, it, it's the song. Like you got to make sure like they don't play the song. So Owen Wilson then goes to the DJ booth. Yeah. And we're then, evil DJ. That is what he's credited as. Justin Thoreau is evil DJ. Which evil is accessible D- via a, a, a thing in the ceiling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you have to jump into it. Yeah. <laughs> There's no other way out. So like they, there's a little fight scene between the evil DJ and Owen Wilson. And they're playing it's like a break dance fight. It's a break dance fight. Yeah. Because they, they, they'll play the song and then Ben Stiller, like, you know, maturing candidate goes into like that mode of like doing backflips over uh-huh. the stage, going towards the prime minister like, with murder in his eyes. Yeah. The major, the, the prime minister's face gets like, CGI'd over and it's Will Ferrell being like, kill the prime minister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, and the song like cuts in and out, cuts in and out until they keep it- in the breakdance fight, which also, by the way, I love that in this universe, like you get challenged to a breakdance fight and no one cheats. Yeah. Like they just start breakdancing and like kicking each other. Yeah. And Hansel's like on his head spinning in circles and his legs are in the air yeah. and he just keeps kicking the DJ in the face over and over again, but he's spinning for like way longer than yeah. is possible. Yeah. Each one of them keeps getting a hand onto the dials because that's how it works and switching the song. Yeah, between yeah. Relax and I can't remember what the other song is that they're using. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but Relax, when it's Relax, um, Ben Stiller is like charging down, doing karate chops, mm-hmm. ready to kill the prime minister. And then it changes, and he turns around, and he starts to slowly saunter back to where he came from. Yeah. And then they put the song back to relax, and he goes back into yeah. his karate mode, and he keeps like just getting a little bit closer to the prime minister every time. Until eventually he like gets close enough to where he has his like hand around the prime minister's head, and that's when Owen Wilson's able to like unplug the whole like sound system. Yeah, yeah, we see this this like. Owen Wilson's getting closer to the plug and we cut to Ben Stiller and he's about to jump. And then Owen Wilson's a little bit closer to the plug, but now Owen, uh, Ben Stiller's like in the air Yeah. and we cut back and his hand is still closer to the plug. And each time we're like progressively like building suspense that we just don't need. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then of course he like, you know, we get Ben Stiller in position, his hands around the neck and the plug finally comes loose. Yeah. yeah. And the, the secret service like takes him down. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's when Owen Wilson is like, wait, no, I got evidence here and throws the computer on the ground. he thinks it's in the computer. Yeah. And it breaks and it's like, wait, where are the where files? Where are the files? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then I think it's like Christina and Mari both come in. And that's when they're like, no, no, no. Like this whole thing was a conspiracy. Yeah. Christine, um, Malin, uh, what's her fucking, I mean, I know it's Christine, Matilda, 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 Matilda. Um, can I call you Matilda? Is just like, no, here's the conspiracy. And Maury like owns up to it. Yeah. He's He's like, like, "Eh, fuck it. I'm old. You know, I did this. It's true. Yeah. And Will Ferrell's like, 
it makes no sense. How, like, he does the same fucking face. Yeah. <laughs> am, I, am I on crazy pills? Am I the only one who hasn't noticed? It's the same face. <laughs> He's doing blue steel. And what's the other one that he does? La, La Tigre. Uh, La Tigre. We, we, there's we, one more. Well, we missed one that, like, he says he's been working he's on. He's been working Magnum. on Magnum. We haven't seen look Magnum yet. Called Magnum. And every time he's always like, can you give us a little taste? Like, I haven't perfected it yet. I actually, I really shouldn't even be talking Get about, about it. it. Yeah. And then he talks about it, like, at length. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there's there's three looks, Blue Steel, La Tigre, and one other that I can't remember, but they're all the same. Yeah, they're all the, it's same all the exact face. same look. Yeah. And so then Will Ferrell's like, well, fine. I guess I have to do everything myself. Takes out like a throwing He's star. He's supposed to have a shuriken. Yeah. <laughs> Shaped like an M. <laughs> Throws it. And Will, f- uh, then Ben Stiller turns around and does a look. Yeah. And, and much akin just starts, to Blue Steel and La Tigre. It's the exact same look, but he's like emanating energy out of it. And it stops. Almost oh, like Magnum. And it stops the, the, the shuriken in its path right in front yeah. of his face. And even, Shut even. Up! I'm just like, who cares about Derek Zoolander anyway? Anyone know I just want to get into the Magnum scene. Because if you can't get the job done, then I will die, you wage hiking scum! <laughs> <laughs> die, you wage hiking scum. <laughs> One look. One look. I don't think so. <sighs> and so he steps in front of the shooting star. <laughs> does this there it is Magnum oh, and fucking John Voight sees it <laughs> on the TV Baby, that's what I'm waiting for that's my son Dear God it's beautiful I do love that that <laughs> even at the end Will Ferrell is like it's he sees the new look and he's just completely after by. after immediately 17 seconds ago <sighs> screaming about how it's all the same yeah. uh, sees the same look and just loses it yeah. <laughs> my god it's beautiful and then John Voigt he's in the bar and he's going that's my son everyone that's my <laughs> son <laughs> but the, the throwing star like stops yeah. <laughs> like he has telekinetic yeah. powers or some shit this is a major problem that Zoolander 2 makes which is he uses Magnum as like the force oh. at, the end, at the end of the movie no. it's like there's like an extended sequence where he's like using Magnum to prevent a bomb from just exploding a volcano and meanwhile, he's like, it's not, I'm too power, it's too powerful. And then Owen Wilson has to develop his own look to also use as like the force and they like raise up. It's terrible. Who the <laughs> fuck wrote that movie? <laughs> <laughs> the same fucking people. <laughs> yeah. um, and then Sting is like Owen Wilson's dad and he's the third, you know, level of magic. Whatever. Um, <laughs> I watched Zoolander 2 for some fucking reason. But no, uh, Mugatu gets arrested. Jerry Stiller tells all. Um, and uh, the, the Stillers, plural, have a godfather. You start hearing the godfather. means the... <laughs> and um, Jerry Stiller, like, or Ben Stiller, like, grabs his dad. He's like, Dad, I know it was you. Why'd you do this? You betrayed me, Fredo. Um, he's like, I just I died to do it, boy. And then he gets arrested, too. Um, and Ben Stiller walks off triumphant. Uh, Derek Zoolander has succeeded at saving the world. Yes. And specifically the prime minister of Malaysia. And then I think the last scene of the movie is just the, the reveal it, of, it, the, of the, of the, of the Derek library Zoolander center for kids who can't read good and want to learn to do other things. Good too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they're sitting there and he's, he's, well, we, we see, um, his, we see is now his wife yeah. with their baby yes. with the same hair. Derek yeah. Zoolander Jr. And we also see Ben Stiller reading a book to the kids. And as the camera pans out, we see that the fountain behind him is are his model friends with the gasoline pumps yes. spewing water <laughs> everywhere. So um, magical. And they built this, this massive um, center on the bank of the Hudson River. Yeah. Seemingly, I think, where the United Nations building is. Like an yeah. insanely expensive piece of yes. real estate. <laughs> and it kind of it pans out, and that's the end of the. No, the last shot of the movie is the baby doing Blue Steel. Right? That's what yeah. it is. Yeah, and then it cuts the end credits, uh, which is Mugatu dancing. Yep, um, yeah. over various titles. And that's Zoolander. That is Zoolander. That's it. Heat <laughs> check. <laughs> um, Zoolander two. Um, 
opens with the center for who <laughs> can't read collapsing <laughs> and, and three days after the fact uh killing christine taylor and brutally maiming owen wilson oh my god and by brutally maiming he has like a f- half like um oh yeah he's got like a like a covering on his yeah, face yeah he's got a covering gets, like, covering marred. half of his face because he got marred in the collapse of the building and then he takes off and it's like a single little scar yeah <laughs> it's like an inch it's like a centimeter tall oh my god uh, that's a good that movie has some decent gags but it sucks yeah um overall uh to listen at home don't watch Zoolander two do watch Zoolander one uh fun movie yeah i like it you want to talk about how this movie came out uh yeah <laughs> so um september 11th 2001 uh <laughs> To the listener or to the the viewer at home who was watching, I believe WTTW or is that Chicago? That's um, Chicago. Is that that's Chicago? But I, I get I know where you're going with this. There was a TV station in New York. Yes. Um. So if you were watching um the news on September 11th, um, you would have been on a commercial break watching a Zoolander ad. Um, and after this movie of him probably being like, I'm Derek Zulin. And then it just suddenly cuts off and would cut to a clip of the World Trade Center um, spewing smoke. Uh, because the, the 9-11 attacks happened during a uh, commercial break for Zoolander, which is insane. Kind of nuts. I don't want to say that that's a fun fact. That is a fact, though. It is a fact, and it's kind of wild. Yes. Uh, it's a fact. And there's a lot of talk is the... After 9-11, they suspend uh, SNL. Uh, David Letterman goes off mm. the air. There's a lot of conversation. Ben Stiller and his producers are like, so are we pushing the movie? Like, we should probably push this movie, right? Yeah. And no Param- one's playing baseball right now. You know, no one's like, playing baseball. And Paramount says, no. We're releasing this movie in two weeks. People need a laugh. Is their logic. It's also like they'd already put so much money into the, the release date. But, like, I don't know if people were ready for a laugh yet. Yeah. Especially in a movie that primarily lampoons New York. Yeah. Uh, ben Stiller did go back and he cut the Twin Towers out of any scene in the movie that they appeared. I was going to say, I didn't remember seeing... They they did movie. restore them for the DVD release and streaming because okay. he felt guilty about doing that. Uh, I think I found it. What did you find? Oh, God. The trailer? Yeah, give me one second. All right. Must be eliminated to wound that hero. But what if not? Crashed? Jim, just a few moments ago, something uh, believed to be a plane crashed into the south tower of the World Trade Center. <laughs> to interrupt you right now. <laughs> he says the world needs a hero, but what it got, and then immediately <laughs> cuts to a guy saying a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. Like, how the fuck? You can't write that. <laughs> Um, I, I feel bad laughing, but like that I mean, is so insane. Do I, but like the like the the way it just lines yeah. up is like really is uncannily yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> unsettling. Um, but yeah, this this move they they elect not to push this movie, um, and Stiller thinks that that's the reason why the movie doesn't do great. No it, shit. It makes its budget back. It makes sixty million dollars off of a twenty eight million dollar budget. So like it was a small budget and it made a little over double that, which is enough to turn a profit, but. The way comedy movies were doing at this time and with how successful this movie ends up going down the line, they expected significantly more mm-hmm. from yeah. it. And it is ultimately everyone's like it was it came out two weeks after 9-11. It's a, it's such a New York heavy movie. Yeah. Like people didn't want to see this right then. Yeah. Um, it should have gotten pushed. It, it gets like pretty muted uh, critical reception. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like 60% on Rotten Tomatoes or something. Ro- Roger Ebert um, gave it one out of four and said, to some degree, Zoolander is a victim of bad timing. Um, it's released two weeks after 9-11 and the presidential assassination plot point, which is in bad taste. Um, but like one out of four. And then apparently Ben Stiller says several years later, Roger Ebert came up to him and apologized and said, I think your movie's pretty funny. I went a little overboard because I was just so riled up about 9-11. Yeah. Which See, that was fair. my first thought when I was watching it. And I was, you know, with when they sent a plane at the Pentagon and the allegedly one was going to go to the White House. Yeah. That this movie coming out around 9-11. Yeah. And the assassination plot is on like another world leader. Yes. I was like, I feel like people would be a little sensitive about that. It seems like some people were. That's exactly <laughs> what did happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, it just like, it's, it, it's a, it is truly a victim. Of, if this movie had come out two weeks earlier, 
than 9-11 or like a year later. Mm -hmm. Probably would have been fine. Probably would have made a decent bit of money and gotten better reception. But people were just kind of distasteful of this whole endeavor. Yeah. Which is what leads to the movie, you know, kind of disappearing out of the box office. But then having its cult like um, groundswell come up over the ensuing years as people start seeing it on TV, they rent the DVD and like when they're in somewhat happier times and be like, oh, wait, no, this movie's funny. This movie's good. And it's it's the definition of a true cult classic. Hmm. Um, by the time, by like 2010, it's like one of the most prominent memes is using like, so hot right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so it, it's a very interesting case study just in like, um, like a, the cult following of a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this movie does hilariously get two votes every 10 years. Uh, Sight and Sound does a uh, ranking of like the best 100 best movies of all time. They ask like a thousand critics, filmmakers, p- actors, people involved in the industry to send a list of 10 movies um, that they think are the best ever. Currently, the um, God, what is the fucking name of this? How do I say this full name? Uh, the the current number one best movie of all time, according to Sight and Sound, is uh, Jean Dielman, 23, Quad de Commerce, 1080, Bruxelles. Um, that is the name of that movie. Uh, but people really like that movie. <laughs> I know people do really like that movie. Um, but like, it, it's a very well respected list. Is the point I'm coming at? Like, it's, it's yeah. In terms of you know best movies ever list, it's the most well respected. Yeah. Uh, just because so many people of repute uh, connect to it. Zoolander got two votes. Um, <laughs> That's at least good. Um, Fernando Juan Lima and Charles Whitehouse gave this movie uh, a vote for best movie, top 10 best movie of all time. Good. <laughs> and I just want to shout them out for, for that. For having great taste. Yeah. Stiller had always intended to make a sequel to this movie, um, but as obviously kind of delayed by the muted reception to it. Um, 15 years later, he ultimately makes what I'm learning is two sequels to this movie. Um, Zoolander 2, which comes out in 2016 and is like a disaster. Uh, that movie ends with Neil deGrasse Tyson doing Blue Steel at the camera. Um, and then apparently there's also an animated movie called Zoolander Supermodel that's available on Netflix and CBS what? All Access. This I'm just finding out about right now. This is What the hell? <laughs> What is that boomerang? Oh, it's a Hansel boomerang. Yeah, it's a Hansel boomerang. Um, it's an adult superhero animated film starring Ben Stiller, Owen Wilson, Tim Gunn, and Nick Kroll. Um, the work was produced in 2011 as a series of short episodes with the intent of releasing as a web TV series, but the episodes were eventually packaged on a film together in 2016. Oh, wait, shit. This movie was released on Netflix in the UK in 2016. God. It was not released in the U.S. until 2020, wow. where it was premiered on CBS All Access. It was Jerry Stiller's final voice acting role before his death on May 11th, 2020. Oh, wow. Crazy. That's nuts. R.I.P. to a legend. Yeah, yeah rip, rip to the legend. Um, Zoolander 2, very bad. Zoolander Supermodel, never seen it. Maybe I will. Who knows? Gonna have to. I think I might have to watch it just because I'm a completionist at heart. Yeah. Um, yeah, ultimately, um, that that's the saga of Zoolander. Uh, yeah. In regards to the Winona of it all, there's really not much uh, to say. I was going to say, yeah. we really didn't talk too much about Winona, but that's... We, I think, we had I think, a hearty think, little chunk. I think we talked as much as we probably could. We that, talked as much about Winona as she is in this movie. We yeah. talked way more about Winona than she is in this yes. movie. And, and yeah. that includes watching the deleted scene. Yes, yeah. we watched the deleted yeah, scenes. that's true. We Winona. went above and beyond for you, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Um, I mean, like, it, it's it's uh, she's in it. She's in a scene. It's great. Uh, it's going to be more movies coming up. Yeah. That's the word on the street. Yeah, the word on the street. Got a movie coming out this year, September. Go see it. Beetlejuice 2. Oh, yeah. yeah. So how does that work? Do you guys cover TV shows that she's in? No. No. Okay, because that but, would be unwieldy. Well. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. No. It'd be unwieldy. Sam, we're going to have one episode about just talk about the context of her involvement in Stranger Things. Okay. Kind but we're of. not, but you're not going to go episode by episode. We're not going to go episode insane. by episode. That's insane. Yeah. But we should, we should at least have one episode to talk about. The, It'll be in like one of our little like era no, breaks. We'll no, talk about stranger no, things in the abstract. No, it's going to be its own episode. It'll be in the app because my thing is if we cover one TV show, we got to cover all of them. 
Yeah, I mean, I see, I see the, I see both I, sides because it's obviously she's like a, a phenomenon in in Stranger yeah. Things. But I'm like, this is a movie about her as a movie star, and the yeah. interesting context is why does her success in Stranger Things not lead to more movie roles? I think that's deserving of its own episode. Yeah, and we'll talk about it when we when we're covering. Um, Destination Wedding, Sarah Cooper, Everything's Fine, Gone in the Night, Haunted Mansion, Beetlejuice 2. No, I think it needs its own episode. We'll be talking about... Um, I'm not watching Stranger Things for this show. Uh, I, I simply don't have what? the time. What? Really? Have yeah. you never watched it at all? I've seen the first three seasons. I watched the first episode of the fourth season. I'm like, I'm sick of this and turn it off. You don't yeah. like Stranger Things? It's like fine. Interesting. I, I, I enjoyed the first three seasons and the fourth season. The first episode was like 90 minutes long. And I'm like, I literally just don't have time for this. I enjoyed the first one and part of the fourth one. Yeah. I would say that season two is, I, my, is rough. I had to watch because it yeah. was being watched and I yeah. was there. Yeah. And season three, I didn't particularly love. And then I thought season four was doing something cool. And then they released those last two episodes. And I was like, okay, so clearly we have a different idea. It was like a two and a half hour is. long episode yeah. of TV. That is longer than most movies. Yeah, it was a bit much. Yeah. I like Stranger Things, and I think it's a good show. Yeah. I I don't think Winona's the star of that show, yeah. obviously, but you know she does some good things. I think it's worth at least having a conversation about. Like, well, like we can talk about it. It's just like I think we have like because we do have a retrospective that lines up exactly with when guess, Stranger Things comes out. Guess what, Jeff? You yeah. have time now. You, I'm, I'm watching. You, a, you, I'm, what, I'm watching what, Top of the what, Lake. What, you, and then what? The little drummer girl. And then what? Probably Star Trek: The Next Generation, all seven seasons. What about rewatching every Mission Impossible movie in order? Oh, though? I've done it so many times. It's so good. Is this a Dead Reckoning podcast now? Yeah, well, let's talk about Dead Reckoning. All right. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have any more final thoughts about yeah. Zoolander. I don't have any more final thoughts about Zoolander, except that that movie is amazing, and I've yeah. seen it way too many times. I'm, I'm pro Lander. Pro I'm glad Lander. I watched it. Yeah. I'm glad I watched it. I won't say I liked it, but I, I'm glad I watched Is it. Is this the first time you had watched my it? My first viewing. It's my first viewing. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. It was just like, I, I mean, Jeff's probably right. I probably discovered it. I wish I knew when, but I probably discovered it watching TBS. Yeah. And was like, this is funny. Yeah. And then I'm sure at some point I turned 16 and learned how to use the internet to like steal movies. And I'm sure I stole a copy of Zoolander. Um. And then I, I think I owned a copy at one point. Yeah. Um, we just used to watch it all the time. That and Anchorman on repeat. Ugh, Anchorman's such a classic. Um, they exist in like the same universe for my head. Yeah. You know, the same, like everything's over the top and really annoying and like probably not funny out of context. Anchorman's a movie that gets funnier every time you think about it. Yeah. Anchorman's a movie where you're like, that was weird. And then like the next day you're like, <laughs> that was funny. But it was so good. So good. Yeah, I think that's all we got to say right. about Zoolander, right? Yeah, I think that's it. Um, Sam, thank you so much for coming on for yeah, the, for Zoolander cast. Good to have you back I, again, Sam. We we knocked out two hours and twenty two minutes. Ooh, wait, <laughs> thanks for having me. Wait, back. let's do the math. Let's do the math real quick, live on air. Uh, it's got to be fifty minutes, fifty percent larger. Fifty minutes over. Yeah. Zoolander is like ninety minutes. Zoolander is eighty nine minutes, and this is what? How many? Two twenty two. Two twenty two. So that's um a hundred and forty two. 42 divided by 89. That's 1.59 the length of the movie. Um, 59% more. Um, we're to giving be you fair, the first 30 minutes we just did whatever we wanted. Yeah, we did just kind of riff. <laughs> there was a little bit of Zoolander in there. Audiences, we're giving you bang for your buck here um, more than you anticipate. But yeah, thank you so much for coming on to talk about Zoolander this week. Well, thanks um, for having me, as always. Yeah, it was a hoot, as always. Um, folks, next week we'll be talking about a movie called Simone. Um, we get to go back with our guy Al Pacino, uh, talk about uh, an AI actress or something like that. Yeah. Um, oh my God, I'm coming back. But yeah, uh, next week, talking about Simone, make sure to tune in. Uh, thank you so much for listening to this week's episode on Zoolander. Um, as a reminder, if you like this episode, please remember to rate, review, and subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on. As a reminder, we're available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube, uh, amongst others. Uh, pop into our Reddit, r slash Trolting, at Trolting Pod, Twitter, Instagram, Blue Sky Threads. Find me on Twitter, at Jeff W. Sweeney. Anything you guys want to plug? I don't think so. Special thanks, as always, to Becca for our graphic design and Michael Van Bodegum Smith for the theme music that's now taking you out. Have a great week, folks. Mm-hmm.